Good evening. I'm going to call the Foxborough School Committee meeting to order. Being May 21st, our regular meetings, 708. The agenda for this evening is as follows. Seven reorganization, 715 visitors, 725 approval of minutes, 730 <coughs> teaching and learning highlights, engineering club, 750 Foxborough High School Senior Project, 810 K through 12 social studies curriculum review, 840 update on town meeting, 850 school committee vote to reappoint Ms. Deborah Spinelli as a voting member of the Bi-County Collaborative Board of Directors for the 2014-2015 school year, 9 o'clock Bi-County Collaborative Capital Improvement Policy, 910 FY14 budget update, 915 other matters, 920 we will be going into executive session for the purpose of discussing contract negotiations with non-union personnel superintendents contract. The committee will return to open session uh, around 9.35 p.m. approval of superintendents contract. So, seven o'clock, we will start with the school committee uh, reorganization. And I know in your packets you had our policy on the school committee uh, <coughs> organizational meeting. I'm just going to read this real briefly for those of you in the audience who may not have heard this before. We have a lot of smiles in the audience tonight. This is <laughs> awesome. In blue, too. Um, so for the purpose of organizing the Foxborough School Committee at its regular, at its first regular meeting, which is this evening, even though it's Wednesday, following the town's annual elections, we will elect from its membership a chairman and a vice chair slash secretary all of whom will hold their respective offices for a term of one year or until a successor is elected. And a majority of the members of the Foxboro School Committee will constitute a quorum, which of course we have this evening. The election will proceed as follows. I will take nominations for the office of chairman. It will be made from the floor. Uh, the chairman will be elected by a majority roll call vote of the members present and voting. If no nominee receives a majority vote, the election will be declared null and void and nominations will be reopened. Then upon election, the new chairman will preside, calling for an election of the vice chair secretary. The procedure used for election will be the same as that for electing the chairman. Uh, and then just to conclude the, this policy, uh, just for informational purposes, any vacancy among the, the officers occurring between organizational meetings will be filled by a member elected by the Foxborough School Committee. The election will be conducted as described above. And following election of officers at its organizational meeting, uh, the Foxborough School Committee may proceed into such regular or special business <coughs> as scheduled on the agenda as I've just read. So with that being said, we'll start with number one, uh, calling for nominations for the Office of Chairman, which will be made from the floor. So. Do I have any nominations for the Office of Chairman? Um, uh, yes. I'd like to nominate Bruce Gardner for the next chair. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. We don't actually need oh, seconds need for second? nominations. No. Oh, thank, thank you. You call, you call for, is there, are there, yeah, are yeah. there any other nominations? Thank you so much. This does come once a year, so. I know. <laughs> and, and I did just read it, but it's no, yeah. Okay, so any other nominations from the floor? Okay, so there's one nomination. So the chairman will be elected by a majority roll call vote um, of uh, yay or nay. So yay. 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 Okay, so congratulations, Bruce. Oh, I'm congratulations. Chairman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Thank and you. then you swap. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I didn't, I didn't unpack too oh, much here. Well, I clearly yeah, she, she has, yeah. she has <laughs> two oh. of the same. Oh, all right. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's stealing your special. He can't. He's now the chair. He can take the candy. That's right. <laughs> oh, yes, he can. <laughs> oh, am I taking my water too? Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you bought okay. it. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. It's funny. Um, Bruce, can, can I, before you proceed, can I just um, make one comment that I probably should have before I moved seats, but I just wanted to uh, thank everyone for a great year as chairman thank you for all your support your guidance your assistance uh in my duties as chairman uh it's definitely a collective effort and uh i just uh, wanted to say thank you thank short you. and sweet but 
It was a pleasure working with you as oh, chair as well. Thank so. you. Thank you. Yeah, you did I really job, enjoyed Katie. it. Thank you. You thank did a great job. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you. Absolutely. You're welcome. And it's a privilege to be able to serve the town again in this seat. Mm. So thank you for your support, everybody. Um, and just a quick comment for me, you know, I was reflecting on this possibility and thinking, you know, we are in such a good place with our committee. You know, and I was thinking about some of the attributes that I appreciate in my colleagues and mm. Bevy, your experience and Katie, your passion and mm. Tina, your logical thinking and close <laughs> touch to the school and the parents and Steve, your new and fresh perspective. I think we're in a good spot. So I appreciate your vote of confidence. Thank you. And with that, let's uh, call for nominations for vice chair. Yes, Bevy. I'd like to uh, nominate Tina Bellinger for vice chair secretary. Any other nominations? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations, Thank Tina. You. Congratulations. Okay, you're gonna, you ladies, gonna stay where you are. Well, for oh, right, yeah. Oh, did you? Well, we could swap it out next week. <laughs> okay, okay. I think okay. That's okay. Excellent idea. Swap okay. Yeah. Although you and Bruce should swap your name tags just so there's <laughs> oh, no yeah, confusion. Yeah, that's <laughs> my, <laughs> your first official <laughs> act. <laughs> attention to see, it is for attention. attention. See, it's for attention to detail. We need you. You've got to run again, Tina. <laughs> All right, moving right along. Approval of minutes. So these are the April 28th uh, <laughs> regular meeting minutes. Excellent. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of April 28th. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 5-0. Thank you. Teaching oh. and learning highlights. <clears throat> Mrs. Spinelli. Okay. So we have actually, unbeknownst to the committee, we have two. One that we've planned. Um, the, we have the Igo Elementary School Engineering Club here. And I love to see the kids are well represented with their Igo t-shirts. I got it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Would you like to go back just a little bit? Well, I, I, I skipped visitors already. I've yeah. flown the agenda. It's Wednesday. It's not our usual it's day. So I'm let, if, I, if I can interrupt you, thank yes. you. Do we, do we have any visitors other than those who are going to be on the agenda who wish to be recognized without sitting around too much longer? Okay. Thank you. Well, then before the IGO kids come up, I'll call this either a visitor or a surprise teaching and learning highlight. So we have one of our wonderful, wonderfully talented and creative high school students, Matt Stamatov. If you could come forward, Matt. Um, it just came to my attention this week that Matt um, is quite the artist and has has an original work of art that is a portrait wow. of of our heart and soul, Sam Burns. Wow! And my understanding, Matt, is that you have created two. Um. And, uh, and we just thought it was so wonderful, and I thought I'm just going to have him come as well, a surprise um, wow. because it's it's mm. just so. Tell us a little bit about about mm. this project. Um, well, I was back to elementary school all the way to like kindergarten. I was really close friends with Sam. And then like middle school, high school, we kind of drifted apart. But I was still like, I still loved him and he was still my buddy and we would always, you know, talk in the hallways and stuff. So when he passed, literally the, I think the, the day he passed, I was like, I got to do a drawing for Sam. Like I got to do a big drawing and dedicate it to him. So I did, so it took me probably two or three months to do this and I, fi I finally finished it and my mom made like actually like five copies I think so I gave the original to the Burns parents I went there gave them an original and then um, Audrey his Mrs. Burns sister came to my house and I gave her a copy and that's going to the Progeric Foundation and then so I wanted this one to be hung up somewhere in the school maybe in the office or the memorial here in the media center so so yeah I really wanted to do this big drawing for him you captured him perfectly yeah perfectly you know oh my gosh you captured his joy mm -hmm. yeah that's the that's the center that picture the uh, portrait I thought the one on the uh, life according to Sam I thought that picture of him was like perfect because he just looked so happy in it so that's the one I chose and then I got some him with his hockey, him with the Patriots, him in the band. It's amazing. Tried to fit everything about Rowan's, him in there. Yeah. Mm. Mrs. Myers back left. I don't know if the glare will be too much, but if you turn just a little bit, yeah. for, I think this way. This way? Yeah. Um, I don't know if they'll, yeah, just. Yeah, you go. There we go. You turn just a little bit more, I think. Are going the right way? I think so. Yep, there you go. Keep going. Perfect. 
Sorry, Matt. That didn't mean to interrupt her. No, that's fine. So, yeah, I was just hoping this could go up in the school for everyone to see because I think this would be a really great thing towards Sam's memory. So, yeah. Are you a junior? Yeah, I so am. So you were, yeah, his class. Yeah, so. That's beautiful. Thank you. Hey Matt, just before you leave, how long did it take you to do that? Um, it took a really long time. I'm gonna say it probably it probably took two two to three months to finish it wow. completely. So by the end, it was definitely it was definitely like I was struggling. It was like every time I had to draw it by the last couple of days, I was like, oh my god, this is taking forever. <laughs> but yeah. but you got did done and looks pretty good. You did a beautiful really job. Does. Clearly something came from the heart. And yeah. mm -hmm. I know it was, you know, this week we asked yeah. you to come, so I know you just came from either practice or a game. Yeah, a game. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, we lost. Okay, oh. well, anyway. Um, <laughs> 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 Moving on. I, 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 was, I, I really thank you for taking the time to, out of your very busy schedule, to hurry up and get out of there and come over here so that we could yeah. all really share in the wonderful. Mm. No problem. Created. Beautiful. Thank you. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Thank you, Matt. Okay. <clears throat> now we have our very exciting teaching and learning highlight. Um, so if the IGO students and Mrs. Mello would come to the front, and you can bring a chair from a couple of the rows. I see we have a lot of supportive parents here. Are you a parent, sir, in the front row? See, that is really sad when he looks like a high school student to me. <laughs> and I, I mean, sad for myself, joyous for you. But I saw him, I think, I wonder if he's one of my, so, I mean, this is, it's, it just tells a lot about where I am in my mm, stage of life, <laughs> that you all look very young to me. Debbie, Mr. Kelly has a sixth grader. Really? Mm-hmm. In addition to his younger son. Oh, wait a minute. Are you Derek? I am. Yeah. Well, you were around my daughter. You're my daughter's age. Yes. And I met your. I know your wife because she was in my daughter's yeah. class. Yeah. And I saw her last month at the family science night. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. So small world. <laughs> ah, <laughs> Lord, people. <laughs> that, that's Foxborough. it's the good Foxborough way. Well, really we look closely at his face. I'm like, wait a minute. And you live on South Street, or you lived. On, you grew up on South, South Street. Street. Yes. Oh wow. <laughs> Really wonderful to see you as a real adult and with children of your own. I mean, what can I tell you? You still look like young to me, like I remember you when you were young, because you look like everything. Ah, well, 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 people. So, Mrs. Mello, would you tell us a little bit about this very exciting new club at the IGO School? How did this happen? And having had the pleasure of stopping in to see them, what's, what, from your perspective, has made it wonderful? And then we're going to hear from the kids. Well. We got an opportunity from the Boston Museum of Science to test out, or our word is pilot, a new engineering unit for after school programs. And it was called Engineering Adventures. And when I applied for it, at first we actually did not get chosen, which was unacceptable because I'm used to being chosen when we apply in Fox <laughs> where Foxborough, we should be chosen. So of course then they came to their senses and they chose us. So. Um, once we were chosen, we had to figure out what school we would like to run the program in, and we were looking at the Taylor School has an after-school robotics opportunity, and the Barrel School has a beep enrichment program opportunity, and the Igo School was looking for an enrichment opportunity, and what better than to do something in the STEM-related field. And Mr. Stanton and I talked about it, and it was really geared at students in grades three through five, and we decided that we would go around to our fourth graders and discuss what this program would be about in aeronautical engineering. Those are some pretty big mm -hmm. words. We were talking about flying technologies. Mm -hmm. And it was very exciting and very typical of our IGO students to see the enthusiasm that they had. And the program could only accommodate 24 students. So we actually had to have a lottery because so many students applied to participate. And we decided to keep it fair and balanced, we would have 12 boys and 12 girls. So this is a picture um, up on the screen of everybody who was in our club. Not, not everybody could be here tonight, um, but you can tell they were very excited. That was actually one of our very first challenges. And this is just everything I just talked about, how we applied, we were selected, the students were chosen, and we had our lottery. And the program itself is designed to run for eight weeks. So there are two preparation adventures and six actual adventures. 
and the idea is to engage students in the engineering and design project from a hands-on perspective and they give them a real problem so the problem is NASA needs to get aerial photographs of the empty quarter and it is a very difficult part of the world to access and so how could they design a flying technology to get the best aerial photographs and they work through the design process so the design process is asking a question imagining some sort of a solution coming up with a plan actually creating and building whatever it is that you planned then testing it and then improving it and that was a really important part of our process so we noticed right away Mr. Stanton and I that this was the perfect opportunity for students to engage in authentic 21st century skills so they spent a lot of time cooperating with each other and they're going to talk to you about that they obviously had to collaborate they worked in engineering teams there was a lot of critical thinking going on especially when things did not necessarily take flight on the first try so they had to figure out why that was and what variables they could change and that led to problem solving so it was really an exciting um, process all the way through on our culminating activity, our last day was last Thursday. We invited parents, friends, and family to come and see a showcase of our flying technologies. And students were able to explain um, the design that they chose and why they chose it. There were certain constraints depending on which part of the empty quarter they were going to be photographing. For example, um, it had to carry this many photographers, and we had to actually put the photographers in the designs to test them. So some people got up on chairs to really make it take flight mm -hmm. and you can see there were a variety mm -hmm. of materials and that Kyle's holding his journal there there was a journaling process all the way through for students to write their reflections do their planning um, and think about ways to improve their designs this is the group that's right here these girls were testing their design <laughs> and Mr. Stanton was a huge surprise in this whole process this was something that I thought I would be doing by myself and Mr. Stanton who actually has to be at kindergarten registration tonight because that was on the calendar before a school committee got changed. He was there every week and he was just as excited as the kids and he really enjoys being part of it. So he's disappointed that he can't be here tonight. So can everybody say thank you to Mr. Stanton nice and loud? Thank you, Mr. Stanton. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna turn the floor over to our engineers so that they can tell you um, different facets of their experience as being members of our engineering club and I'm going to start with Abby who's going to speak nice and loud into the microphone and she's going to tell us about what she thought about engineering before this experience and then what she thinks about it after go ahead um, so before um, I um, I come like thought about engineering um, well, before I really never thought of engineering as something that I wanted to do, but um, now I think of it as more of something that I want to do more, and it was like fun to design the stuff throughout the process of making the flying devices. Yeah, <laughs> devices that. I made and um, that could be enough if that's enough yeah. if you don't want to say anything mm -hmm. else are you good <laughs> yeah. take, it, take a breath <laughs> so through our experiences we learned to make different types of devices we're going to show you a couple of them at the end but um, Liam and Brian you want to talk about your experiences Sure. Move, Abby, would you move the microphone over for them? Thank you. Well, um, on, nice the, on the dropcopter, we had to make it drop slowly and spin, and that was something we found um, hard and easy. Hard and easy. Mm. It was fun once we actually started to spin and then added to spin faster and faster. Did you make some improvements to make it spin faster? Um, Lots. Brian, you want to tell us about them? What did you do to make it spin faster? Well, um, we made some out of different materials, and then we started thinking about 
different designs to help hold in air and help it drop more slowly. And did you add anything to it besides materials? Um, Were you one of the groups that added paper clips? Mm, yes. Yes. Maybe. What did the paper clips do? Mm. Weighed it down. It weighed it down a little bit. Very nice. Who would like to speak next? Kyle? <laughs> speak. All right, go ahead. Um, I was going to talk about the drop copter and it has to fall very slowly and spin as it goes down. It's actually a lot more challenging to make than a lot of the other things. And uh, the lighter materials that you used, it would fall slower. Okay. So what do you have there? I have my own drop copter that I made. Okay, would you like to hold it up nice and high and demonstrate? And you can stand up. Okay. And you can stand mm -hmm. over like next to your chair in that open space there if you want, not on the chair. We would love okay. to be on the chair, but we won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, you can let it go. And unfortunately, you can't see the spin until the bottom usually. So, no. But it, you want to try it one more time? Sure. See if that will twirl. So hold it up as high as you can. Go on your tippy toes. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, you could borrow Mr. Euchre for just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you really got a good spin. That's though. a great idea, actually, yes. Yeah, seriously. I'm, I'm very serious. <laughs> Um, I chose to talk about the things I liked about the program and I had loved all the teamwork that we needed and the hands-on activities but I think working together was the most important part because our group we had good ideas but it didn't turn into a great idea until we combine all our ideas. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. One thing that I thought was really um, unique about the program was there was a day where we had a conference between groups so that they could show their technologies to each other and get feedback and share suggestions. And they actually took each other's suggestions and improved their technologies and I thought that was fabulous. Quinn, would you like to talk next? Um, sure. Well, I chose to talk about the most challenging things that all the groups had trouble with. Um, probably one of the most challenging was actually the drop copter, because a lot of people either had made them go too fast or couldn't make them spin at all. <laughs> it was very actually a challenging project. Mm -hmm. And what else? Well, there was one other one that was really challenging. Um, probably the flying disc. <laughs> Did you agree um, with that? Yeah. The flying they, disc? Flying yes. disc. They they were supposed to go up in the air and stay high for for a few seconds, but most and spin, and mo mostly we kind of all did not have a great experience with that. Yeah, that one was challenging. And when I went to the Museum of Science on Monday and met with all the other schools who tried it, we all agreed that was very challenging. And that lesson actually will no longer be part of the unit because <laughs> people could not get it to work. It was very frustrating. But I said it was a lesson in perseverance. So sure. And that's what happens in the real world. That's exactly mm -hmm. what happens. You work in, in a project, world. you work in a project, you think it's going to turn out, then it doesn't. So you have to go in a different direction. That's right. May I ask you all a question? Yeah, Katie, One. can Katie finish? Oh, can yes, Katie. Katie. Um, we also created a wind tunnel. The students created a wind tunnel. And Katie would like to demonstrate. In the interest of time, we're only demonstrating that one. But you want to talk first, Katie? Yeah. Um, with the wind tunnel, you were supposed to put a device into a tube where there's a fan at the bottom, and it's supposed to go up and over the top. You had to have two photographers. and you could only use three or less materials. So those were the criteria and the constraints. Would you like to try and demonstrate it? Okay. I don't know. Oh, it's gonna take care of this for us. I just wanna watch the board. Okay. It just reaches. The only other disappointing part that every pilot site agreed was that the fans were not strong enough. 
Hmm. So that was definitely a challenge for us. Would you like to start? Is that turned in the correct direction? I'm sure it is. Julia, would you, I mean, mm. Caitlin. <laughs> would you like to turn it on, please? It's the very first stop on the knob, and the knob is really close to you if you just reach out and turn it on the bottom, right there. Just one. There you go. Stuck. It's stuck. If we move yeah. it to the middle just a little bit. There you go. Oh, cool. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, that's awesome. And there are. <laughs> wow. wow. And there are two little photographers oh, inside at the basket there. That is impressive. Well done. I don't like that too. So while we're admiring, <laughs> this my question is to help people who might be watching at home to understand a little bit more about technology, to understand what you now understand. So here's my question. Think back to the beginning. One of your first couple of times you were meeting and I stopped in to visit you. You were working in your teams really well, may I compliment you. But you were looking at everyday items like staple removers and other little things that we just see around our life. And you were working in teams to answer some questions and make notes about them. Why were you doing that? Um, actually, it was because so we could get a better idea of the project. If we didn't know anything we were talking about, we'd be very confused mm -hmm. and we would have failed. So those little objects you were looking at were designed to show you that engineering does what? Oh, do you remember the do you remember the objects they were looking at? Yeah, it was at? a staple they may remover. Not. They, yeah, remember we looked at like a was staple layer. Might have been a paper clip. Mm -hmm. um, yes, all stuff like that. Scissors. So oh. the so the whole point of looking at those objects that we take for granted, we see them every single day at school, in our house. The whole purpose of you looking at that before you started designing the flying technology was so that you could understand that that engineering or engineers, the purpose is what. What do they do? Um, I th I thought that you everyday life would be so much harder if we didn't have engineers or engineering things exactly right because engineers or engineering does, is designed to solve problems in the world and it could be a small problem like mm. is was this item engineered i yes. assume so because remember if you ever see in, or read in the old days they used to dip something in an inkwell like liquid so this was designed to make a better writing instrument so everything we have even the paper clip this bottle is this engineered this bottle of water yeah, yeah. how do we is, know if it's engineered do you remember um, um if it solves a problem and it's not natural. Ah, it didn't occur in nature, right? Correct. That's right. right. If it solves a problem and it, it isn't something found in nature. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> nice job. Hello, Mrs. Stanton. Hello, how are you? My apologies. We had kindergarten open yes, house today. we've heard. We had a big late. collective so, thank you from everybody. Yeah, it won't be. I'm so proud of the children, uh, the families for supporting this, and Mrs. Mello for bringing the opportunity to the school. But it was it was a lot of fun, um, and really to see them problem solve, collaborate, and really explore and build it was inspired me. So I'm proud of all the children, that, especially the ones who came to represent their friends here as well. Awesome. And a big thank you to the parents for bringing them here tonight and yes. for picking them up on time each week after we were all done. Yes. <laughs> Awesome. Anything you'd like to add? They've done a great job showing and explaining what they did and what they learned. Just fabulous. I, I trust, I look at what's in front of me here and I know that they, they hit it out of the park. So. Yes. They, they did, they did. Thank, they you. Did. thank you for allowing us to come Oh, this thank well. you all. Very thank exciting. Look, 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 look. Look at that. Huh? Awesome. <laughs> that was great. All well, right. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you all very much. You did a wonderful Maybe you can hire them all. <laughs> we have an engineering club at the Ahern, so you might maybe they'll go on to do students. that. You don't know. Wow. All right. Too dark. All right, the place is clearing out. Awesome. <laughs> yes. 
So is this, this is an actual nice. agenda item. Um, it's not part of our teaching learning highlight, but it clearly is part of that. The reason it's on your agenda, if you recall, this is an, a new project, the senior project that was proposed by Mrs. Myers Packle last year and that um, a proposal was brought forth by, um, by Diana and Lorene White that you approved in September and at the time um, the committee asked wouldn't it be nice in the spring to find out how it went, mm -hmm. how, many, how many students participated, what were the highlights, what did we learn from the first year out. So we've got Mrs. Myers Packle and Mrs. Pillsbury who we all know is our school to career specialist. <laughs> Wait till she gets her hands on those little kids that just left <laughs> engineering when they get up here. I'm um, sure that will be wonderful. So um, I know um, Mr. Murray was also very involved in developing this proposal. So tell us what, what we've learned from the first time out. And then we've got some students. Can't wait to find out how their experience was. Good showing. It is a very good showing. We're very excited about yes. this. And um, actually, I think Mrs. Pillsbury and I are going to really let the students speak for themselves as far as what has been going on in their lives over the past few weeks. Um, but just to recap a bit, um, and we do have a, a little bit more of an updated and detailed handout for you that we'll give to you, but these are all the points that we're going over. And I know Ellen also has another copy of the Senior Project Booklet in case you would like another one. Um, we do have those. Um, but it has the premise behind our Senior Project was to really um, allow students that opportunity to go out and really put into play all of the aspects of things that they were learning here um, as far as 21st century skills were concerned. Um, that whole collaboration of what you just heard and the whole communication piece and the teaming and working together and all of that. And being able to go out and um, participate within the community uh, as an internship, unpaid, um, in an area of interest, potentially as a lifelong interest, potentially maybe. No, I've changed my mind and that isn't gonna be something that I would really like to do. Um, so Ellen, I'll let you take it from there as far as the numbers of students that okay. we had. And um, our project, we had 21 students involved. Uh, some students were working, um, our Metco kids found it difficult to get jobs here, so we placed the Metco kids in Boston, and that worked out really well. They were at Kearney Hospital and a Great. preschool, and one of our students there said, uh, after doing seven weeks, and I went in and checked on her, she said, she does not want to work with little people. She's decided that working with little I'm people, shocked. she said, you know, they don't listen, Mrs. <laughs> I was, I was I'm like, shocked because she was so set on that as a career. She I was. Know who you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, so she's decided that she would like a little bit older than the smaller children. And she also made the comment, this is a lot like work. She said, you don't understand. I go home, I'm exhausted at the end of the day. <laughs> I said, well, welcome to our world. We've been doing it since we're 13. So oh um, it was a great experience for her, and she loves being there, but it has confirmed she's just changed mm -hmm. her career path. Mm -hmm. The girls at Kearney Hospital are doing really, really well. And then we have kids at Sturdy Children's Hospital in Boston. One of our seniors here is commuting into Boston twice a week. Um, to work at Children's on Pediatric Oncology. Um, she can tell you about that later. Uh, we've got Cable, Foxborough Cable. So I've got a list of where all the students are for you as well, so that you can see where they are. We've got a good representation tonight of where they are. The project started on April 7th. It will be done Friday. The students will then next week and the week after be presenting their Pro, uh, their product, they had to leave a product behind where they were uh, as a thank you for having them. And um, they also have to do a PowerPoint presentation to us next week. They will be bringing their thank you notes, time sheets, their journals. They've kept a journal every day that they're at work. And that will all come back with them next week. Um, I have been in touch with the students every week. I set up, one of the kids were like, set up an Edmodo account. I was like, oh, I don't even know what Edmodo is, but I did find out what Edmodo was. It does now. <laughs> uh, and I, that's how I communicate with the kids is through Edmodo. I message them at least once or twice a week and they all respond back and then the conversation gets back and forth. So they have kept in touch. Uh, they have all had a great experience. Some have confirmed what they want to do and others have changed their mind which is also a great learning experience so and they will tell you about their experiences tonight so and just in general from the time that we saw you in october until the time that you're seeing us now just so that 
kind of to recap, um, we did have a parent student meeting for any of the students who were interested. There was a proposal deadline, a mentor um, deadline as well that went into it. The students also had to maintain grades and so they had to have their teachers sign off as well because for our students they were leaving the classroom. Um, we also had some mentor uh, conversations that took place with, with faculty folks as well um, that were involved. Um, the site visits have taken place and our students have been on their job sites. And I have to tell you for some of the students who were very reserved and um, when I went out a few times to visit I must tell you the growth, the personal growth that I have seen in some of these kids, they are now making eye contact, they shake your hand, they can converse, they are really out of their comfort zone and that in and of itself to me is a success story for some of these kids that were struggling in the building and being out in the business world and dealing with people and clients has been a marvelous experience and they can't thank us enough so when did this actually start how long have they been out they've been out since April 7th they finished up third quarter and that following Monday they were out the door so you, you said there are 21 students? Yes. And did any of those students decide that they didn't want to pursue the senior projects once no. they started Of the 21, it? those are the 21 who committed to the project. And, and they probably have what, about 32 who showed great interest Tris, altogether. And then it whittled down when they, it came time to get projects, their letter of intent okay. in to find a placement. I placed 11 out of the 21 personally so once the 21 students right. and we're going to hear from them shortly once they started all 21 kept their commitment and that's what I wanted to know brothers. that's awesome Everyone that's impressive them. that's very impressive so yet still to come is that the students do have their final presentation right and um, there will be a panel of us who will be um, listening to what they have to say reviewing all of the documentation and um, they will be graded accordingly so so far I mean they're all it's all A's right now. So, Did they receive especially if you're here tonight, right? Absolutely. <laughs> That's a plus. <laughs> Did they receive supervision or like through their mentor about how to, you know, pr make a presentation and, and I have touched look. base okay. with all of them yeah. on what I expect to be done and how I expect it to be done. I've sent them little notes. Don't forget these are the following things mm. you need to bring. I am in constant contact with them. Either they stop in when they're not working. Uh, or I've touched base with them by Edmodo or phone or texting mm. or something. So they are all coached. Mm. Even, uh, you know, my big thing is I need them to write a thank you to these people that have had them, their mentors that have had them. And uh, we've gone over it. Mm. So yeah. they're going to bring those as well with them this week so that we can review them. Right. And it's all in there. Go ahead, Tom. I was going to say it's all in their senior project booklet as well, that those directions the are in there, kind of just okay. the, the reminders. But Tom, yeah, please well, go this, ahead. This is the first year. These are the ambassadors. Absolutely. They're the ones who are going to be talking to our uh, junior class right now and saying, this is what I got out of it. These were my takeaways. So we're really excited. It starts with 21. We hope it really builds into most of the senior class, teaching a lot of seniors myself. I asked them, why didn't you do it? And they didn't really have a lot of... Um, reasons why they didn't do it and they had a lot of regrets for not doing it so we really were cautiously optimistic it starts with 21 and this is going to be a lot of the senior class uh, this is being done in a lot of school districts in the area and there's so many things that they can do to give back to the community and that's what we're really excited about and, and creative ideas from murals to um, working for the state forest you know things that you have passion for things that you want to do and give back and that's what we're really looking forward to kids having some creative ideas and we've already talked about Ellen and I were just talking about this this morning that there's already things that we're looking to make some modifications in as we've gone along because this is a work in progress and we are very much looking forward to um, the exit um, information that the students will be giving to us and uh, and taking all of that in because again we will we will continue to um, to tweak this and to refine it um, as we go along and it should be a work in progress it should be something that that is very fluid um, to meet the needs of, of the clientele our students that we have here um, have you gotten any feedback from college admissions offices about the school having this as part of its curriculum senior year? Well, do you want to go ahead yeah, first? It, 
we had a person <laughs> speak to us. We had a college day mm -hmm. that we brought the kids of all the juniors into Boston. It was a great day. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, one of the admission officers was outstanding. was from Providence. And he totally supported this idea mm -hmm. and loved the idea because, again, it shows students who take risks. That's a good thing. It shows students who are getting involved in the community. That's a real good thing. And mm -hmm. it, it's volunteerism. There's so many positive attributes mm -hmm. to it. Um, you know, they, they, some of our AP students, they had to come back to take the AP classes. That was one hurdle that we had. If a student mm -hmm. is taking four or five AP classes, that can be a real struggle. Mm -hmm. So there are some hurdles with it. It's not a perfect system, but it, it's pretty good. And, mm -hmm. you know, the takeaways, that's what we really want. Right. And it's that piece that can set that individual apart. And we also think, too, that if a student is not going directly um, to college or to a university and they're going into the workforce, they're building a resume. They've already got, they've got that letter of recommendation. They've got that um, on the site or on the, in the workplace um, experience that's right there. And you can't take that away from anybody. Um, once again, one more edge, just another edge for our students to have another opportunity to be able to advance themselves. Um, you, you said the word ambassador, which I, I, I think is excellent. Did we get feedback from the places where the students were and could these students or this program be used to entice other businesses to join forces with us to, um, uh, to move the program forward in I any have, Steve, speed I, we need to? I have been in touch with every place that these kids are at. I am in touch with them constantly, probably once a week. Mm -hmm. um, I was just telling some of them tonight that the feedback that I got from their uh, host was very positive. They are looking forward to having more kids come back. Um, 47 Studios, which is up in West uh, Westwood, was thrilled and said, we'll take a few next year. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna make a list of what they're looking for, and I will hopefully, I'll put it out there to the kids, and if we can match them up, that would be a great thing. Sturdy Hospital was thrilled, Children's Hospital. Um, that's, I, I volunteer there every Thursday on pediatric oncology. They ask uh, Caitlin to come back for the summer to continue her um, oh, her exciting. mentoring of the kids Excellent. and they've even asked her to continue through her college career which is phenomenal they don't normally do that they had three seats and I just happened to be in the office one day and they I said hey did you get my kid uh, is she going through the process and they were like well we only have three seats I said well could I have two and she said no you can't have two but you can have one I said I'll take the one <laughs> so Caitlin is going into children's um, Mike Weber at Foxboro Cable, Jess, got taken on in a paid position for the summer. Whoa. Lauren White, who was here this evening, did a cosmetology. She has been taken on in a paid position. Um, Kearney Hospital has enjoyed the girls, and they have called me and said that they would like to have kids come back for next year. Um, all our elementary schools have contacted me and said, we're on board. We're going to take some kids next year. I was like, OK. So the feedback from the employer is phenomenal and they are thrilled with the project one one more thing if I may that is terrific to hear but it also shows the type of student and and member of our community that we mm. send out to the to the to the world you know mm -hmm. the, these students have also represented their families our town the community the school district that they, you know, most of them grew up going to, and Correct. and and that, and, and I'm looking at you now. I mean, that's pretty impressive stuff to hear, mm -hmm. um, because I've been rejected from some of the finest companies in the world. So, <laughs> and they do represent. It's nice to hear that you've been very successful. And they do represent us well, and not all of them are going on to college. I have to mm -hmm. tell you, Steve. So it's just, right. I mean, what you see here. Right is a small sampling, mm -hmm. but they have all had a successful, great experience, and so have the employers. So Thank you. Great. Um, and just one other piece. We did on the college day that Tom had mentioned, not only did the students go in, our juniors go in um, for the college fair in Boston, and not only did we have the admissions officer from uh, Providence College speak to the students, but we also had some of our um, senior project students speak to our juniors as well. And as a result of just that initial, this is something you really want to consider. You've got five. Five as of today. And we haven't even started the process. I mean, that process <laughs> is really next year that we start this in the fall. So there's already Sorry. five students that have come forward to say, I'm in. Let me start, you know, I want to start looking at this stuff now. And they're thinking because 
some of the, I had a, a young lady come in today and she said she wants to go into social work and due to HIPAA and the Privacy Act it's kind of difficult so I said well if we can't get you into psychology or sociology I said would you consider going into working uh, with kids in a school system or working with a mm. hospital in a hospital setting oh yeah where can I go I said well we've got the next gen, so I'm gonna work on that over the summer and uh, see that I can place her and make some phone calls and and if I don't know somebody somebody else who knows somebody else who knows somebody else so it's a, a network thing for me so we had huge ambitions that we were hoping for that 50 mark that was kind of the round figure that um, Lorraine White who was unable to be here um, uh, had we put out there and um, we were hoping for that number but we also knew too that this was a first year and again it is the inaugural year so these students are pioneers and you know that's the first time out and people have to see what's going to happen and one of the questions that we did have is can I come back for senior stuff and so absolutely you could come back for senior stuff now the dressing up this week they weren't necessarily <laughs> participating in um, but certainly with um, Friday being our last day for seniors the students are able to come back they'll be able to participate in the drive around the common um, and the other mm -hmm. activities that will be happening during senior week as well so um, sometimes those pieces are still important for people to hold on to and we certainly didn't want our students to lose those either so but we'd like for them to speak because yeah so Sasha put this um, oh, yeah. This is just a short introduction to Senior Project, and then we'll have the kids come up. Hi, I'm Jess um, This is Foxborough Cable Access, uh, my site for Senior Project. And I've been doing a lot of, well, a variety of work, really, um, editing some computer. I shot a lot of footage did some lighting for a few shows. Um, and I really think that Senior Project has given me some great experience for the field that I'm gonna go into and really helped me uh, prepare for what it's gonna be like in college and anywhere that I may go after. So I would really encourage anybody that's thinking about doing it to definitely take advantage of the opportunity and go out and just, just do it. <laughs> I'm at 47 Brand and I'm working at the web, on their website, uh, helping them out, and I enjoy this experience. Hi, my name is Madison Crosby, and I'm interning at Mockingbird Music. Um, I clean up the rooms and I help press CDs for them and I do a lot of like small work with recording um, and I think it's been a really valuable experience because it'll help me next year in college. I'm Justin, I'm from Foxborough High School and I'm doing the senior project and it's a great opportunity to really learn outside the classroom and learn how the real work world is. Hi, I'm Sasha and I'm doing the senior video for my senior project. Last year I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do in the future, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do like graphic design or something like that or like film and this really helped me to decide that this was definitely what I want to do. So I definitely think it's a valuable experience if you're thinking of doing it next year. Um, I'm Danielle Novellis and I do my senior project at the middle school and then the other half of the time I'm at the high school and when I'm at the middle school I work with Mrs. Denise shadowing her and I work with the seventh and eighth grader and then when I'm here I take on kind of freelance projects right now we're working on buddy benches for the Ago, so we're painting them with me and Rachel are doing that and then at the her and I've been setting up for the art show and I like it a lot because it helps me figure out that this is what I want to do it's just a matter of determining what age group I want to work with and I also like being at the high school working on my own stuff because as much as I like teaching, I don't want to lose my own ability to paint and do all that stuff. So I like it a lot. The only thing I don't love that much is I think I decided I probably wouldn't prefer eighth graders or older kids. I like 
younger ages a lot. So. Hey, who's Come on up. Yeah. Jess, Can you want to start from your around? Come on. Want to break the ice? Right. Yes. Yeah. Come on, Sasha. Danny, you're up. All right. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Jess Todd. I did my senior project at Foxborough Cable, and I loved every aspect of it. Um, there's some great people up at Foxborough Cable. It's mostly volunteer run. Um, Mike Everson is actually recording this right now, so he's probably going to hear this and blush a little bit maybe <laughs> but um, they've they've really taught me a lot and the, th the, the thing that I really want to express to people is that you might the one ha the one um, setback or the one negative thing that people might think about when seeing senior project um, is that well this is the time of school that you really want to be in and you can't um, you can't replace this kind of experience um, and that's really what I've been able to take away from it. Um, I've learned so much about broadcast journalism. I could go on, I could tell you all about lighting, uh, editing, filming, speaking, um, just anything. I could go on for hours. And that kind of stuff that you learn, um, it's, it's not really, it's not easy to learn it in a classroom because you have to stick to your core classes. So while you have your core requirements, there's only so many electives you can take. So with an, like, with an opportunity um, such as this, you really can't, um, you or you shouldn't hesitate in taking uh, advantage of it. Now, just as I said in the video, I would encourage anybody or any of the juniors, any of the sophomores, any freshmen, any of the fourth graders that just came in that as long as the program's still going when they get here, just to take advantage of it. Um, the one thing that I did find that was a little bit of a problem was the AP classes. Um, you have a requirement for hours a week um, and sometimes going to and from can pose a problem to that. Um, and it can be a little bit of a hassle, um, and it can kind of impede what you're trying to do. So I'm trying to make my own show up there, but it can be a little harder, um, especially going to and from school and also to and from sports. Um, so it kind of gets in the way of being able to film uh, what you want to film um, and capture what you want to capture. Uh, but other than that, it's really been a great experience, and um, I've loved it. You've learned about the challenge of balancing time in life, which we, every single one of us, are still experiencing. Mm -hmm. That is for certain. Even in retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Ian turned into a paid job. That's impressive. Do you think you'll continue with uh, journalism or broadcast journalism in college? I'm definitely going to. I'm going to go. I'm going to Michigan State, and I've already declared my major uh, for broadcast journalism. So. That's um, great. Yeah, and Foxborough Cable has really helped me with that. Um, they've really gave me a great experience and gave me some positive influence towards going into that kind of field, so. It's fabulous. Congratulations. Thank you. Good job, Jess. Wow. Well, mm. Thank you. Hi, I'm Danielle DeVellis, again. Um, I'm doing my internship, yeah. I'm doing my internship at the Ahern with Mrs. Denise with the seventh and eighth graders for Just Art. And I know I've, I've known I wanted to be an art teacher for a while, but to actually be there all day and work with them has been quite an experience. Since September, I've been there every day, but only for an hour. So now I get to stay all day, which is cool. And also the thing I'm leaving behind, we're doing ceiling tiles right now. So I got to see a project from start to end and I got to come up with it, run the steps, and we actually just finished them today. So. It was really exciting. And then the other half of the time, I'm at the high school. And while I'm here, I either work on my own stuff or I work on something that's for the community. Right now, me and Rachel Williams, we're both, we split it up, we split up our time. Um, and we did buddy benches for the IGO school because a mom contacted me because I, through the rec department Facebook page. So we got the three benches, we came out with the designs. Um, we just finished them, we're putting on the seal now, and then they're gonna, hopefully go back to the IGO and stay there for a while, so. Some amazing experiences you named yeah. over here to go. Oh, you designed the t-shirt, that's what it is. Yeah, I have some stuff up there. I don't know where it is, because it's kind of small, but yeah, I really like it. I'd highly recommend it for the kids next year. You said in the video that this has also helped you kind of identify what age group you want to work with, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, wanna eighth graders, they're not that much younger than me that mm. they really see me as an authoritative 
figure. Okay. But I'm thinking that all new teachers kind of think like that. So I'm maybe sure. when I'm older, it'll be a little different. But I like little kids. I do mm. an after school program with eight to 12 year olds and I like them a lot. So awesome. that's great. That Lesson learned. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Jess, by the way, I think Mr. Everson might need you in the back. Yeah. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what's coming out at home, but uh, if, if Tom is experiencing technical difficulties, I'm sure they're working on it. All right. Thank you, Danny. It was great. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Sasha, and I started working on the senior video in September. I originally just had like an independent study to work on it, and it was kind of difficult because like, I would start editing something, and I would just get in the zone of working on it, and then it would be like, the bell would ring and I have to go to the next period and it'd be like, oh, I have to come back tomorrow. So we decided that I was gonna do the, continue the video but for senior projects. So it's great now I get to come to school and work on it all day long and there's no interruptions. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's really given me a chance to make the pro final product with my name on it much better than it would have been if I didn't have all this time. I actually brought a copy. It's not, the video isn't done, but it's just a prototype of what it's gonna look like oh, on that. The video, like doing the video really helped me come out of my shell because I was really shy and like I had to come up to kids and say, hey, can you help me with this part of the video or can, can I take a picture of you? And just doing that helped me to have much better communication skills and I really enjoyed doing it because I didn't know if I wanted to do graphic design or video and this helped me decide that I really want to do video. That's great. So That's what are you going to do next year? I'm actually not going to college next year because I moved here from England in eighth grade and my parents haven't decided if they want to live here in England, and I don't want to make that decision on college until I know for sure what they're doing, too. I was wondering, didn't we have that conversation a couple of months ago, and so I wondered yeah. if anything had changed. Like, mm -hmm. maybe we go, okay. Well, I'm sure you can find other work experiences mm -hmm. based yeah. off of this if you wanted to. So. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and sometimes it's a skill set. Mm -hmm. That's good. And the video is showing on June 5th, so if you guys would like to come see it, you're welcome to come. Where? Thank you. In the auditorium. What time? Um, we're, we have the cookout at like 11, so it's going to be following that, so maybe like 12 o'clock. June 5? Yeah. Now, is this something that every student will receive yeah, the, as well? Yeah, it's so if you bought the yearbook by a certain deadline, yeah. you get the video for free with the yearbook, but if you didn't, then it's $25 to purchase it. Okay. It's like an hour and 10 minutes right now. It's probably going to be like an hour and a half, and I'll be filming right up until the last day of school. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Good luck. Congratulations. Well, you are fascinating. You are really are a fascinating a woman. So I, whatever you do with video, I think you're going to end up doing it all over the world. That's my guess. Mm -hmm. so that's the impression I had of you. I'll go. So we'll look forward to seeing your name on things. Mm. All of their names, I think. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, um, hi, I'm Rachel Williams. Um, I'm doing my senior project at the IGO, and I'm working with Miss Lorman. She's the art teacher there, and I definitely knew that I wanted to be an art teacher, but I just, I thought I wanted to teach older ages, so I knew by doing the elementary school, I would kind of figure out what I wanted to do, and I definitely want to do younger ages now <laughs> after doing it, because I love it so much, and I helped her set up the art show and everything, and take it all down, and I'm just kind of like student teaching with her, and I really enjoy it. Like, it's been really awesome. It's wonderful. Great. And I love the kids. Like, it definitely made me realize that I want to teach younger kids because I like them a lot better. <laughs> Good. Good for you. Thank you. Where you oh, and I'm going to Mass Art, and I'm going to major in art education. I also wasn't really sure what I wanted to major in. Like, I knew I wanted to do something. I, know I wanted to be an art teacher, but I didn't know what I wanted to major in, so it kind of helped me figure that out, too. And it helped me come out of my shell a little bit more because I was definitely more shy before I did it. And being in an environment where you're treated more like an adult mm -hmm. definitely made me less reserved. It's terrific. It's great. So talented. Thank you. My name is Dina Alami. I'm interning at Strady Memorial Hospital. I'm actually interested in diagnostic medical sonography, but because of HIPAA and all the privacy acts, I had a lot of trouble I've tried shadowing many people. They declined me because of, obviously, the privacy. So for me, I felt like this was my chance to see if I would like this or not. But I'm actually interning at the x-ray department. It's, they obviously still aren't allowing me in the ultrasound. But I'm still getting a feel of what it's like to be in the hospital. 
it's definitely crazy because I'm right next to the emergency room and there are a lot of things that I did not expect. Oh my God. <laughs> like just the other day, I was helping bring a patient back to the ER and there was this patient trying to run away and there were like 10 security guards running after her. And I was like, whoa, like, I don't know what to do. It was, it's definitely, yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was pretty scary, but it, now I know what actually goes on in the hospital. Um, you still One interested thing, in that field? Yes, I am. I actually did get a chance to see a few ultrasounds. The tech let me go in a few times and shadow him. It was nice. Mm -hmm. And I'm still interested in it, but I do have a backup plan. If I'm not, if ultrasound doesn't work for me, I think x-ray is still really interesting. So definitely that's a backup. Good for you. Oh, great. Good yeah. job. The one thing I didn't really like was, this was my fault though. I have a hard time saying no to people. They asked me to help volunteer in the medical records office. And I think I definitely know that, that I don't want to be working with papers. I'd much rather be working with patients. Good. So I think that did help. And I definitely recommend it. It was a great experience. See, that's Very a good learning good. experience yep. right there. Oh, yeah. Very good. That you Thank want you. the direct interaction. Yeah, yeah. I do not like paperwork at all. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Caitlin. I did my internship at Boston Children's Hospital. Um, I absolutely loved it. I'm still going to go back, like Ms. Pillsbury said, in the summer. And hopefully once a week throughout college, I plan on going for nursing, so at Curry College in Milton. So the, the commute was a little difficult. Mm -hmm. I tried driving in the first few weeks, but I ended up taking the train. I just got off the train and came right here. So. Um, the kids are absolutely amazing. They have the most positive attitude about life, and it's just, you wouldn't even know they're sick. It's just, they're so happy, and even when they're not feeling great, you always just, you go in the room, and like, you just watch a movie. They just like the company, and even if they don't want to run around, go to the playroom, and stuff like that. Um, um, so you're gonna keep it going in the summer. Yeah. You're keep, you're gonna, you have a, you'll have summer work there. Yeah, I'll go once a week during the summer instead of twice because I get on the train at nine in the morning mm -hmm. and I get home at six, but twice a week. Um, but I'll end up going just Wednesdays from ten to five. So wonderful. Yeah. What an experience. And even on yesterday, David Ortiz came in. And it was on the news, and my dad taped it. I didn't know, because I only go on Monday, Wednesday. And um, he, I was like, oh my god, I know that kid. I know that kid. That's the floor that I work on. And they were all so happy. And yeah, it's, it's great. I love it there. And the only thing that I didn't like was I took two APs. So um, it was difficult trying to balance those and going into Boston. And yeah. That's a lot. Good for you for sticking it out. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Very impressive. The variety is, is so yeah. impressive. So, um, I'm Maria Scher, and for my senior project, I was with Ms. Schuster, the elementary art teacher, and I went back and forth from the Taylor School and the Igo School, and I was also at the high school for a period every morning. And um, it was definitely a great experience because I always knew that like I wanted to work with kids when I'm older. But, like I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with it. And like I didn't really know how I felt about being an art teacher. And it was a great experience because like I learned I don't want to be an art teacher. Mm -hmm. I mean, like it's fun, but it's just it's not for me. Mm -hmm. But like it taught me that I definitely wanted to um, work with younger kids when I'm older. And I'm sorry, I'm blanking. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That's good. So you learned something yeah. from the experience. What are you going to do want? next year? Um, I'm going in for graphic design. Good. Yeah, so we'll Fair. see how that goes. Uh, University of Hartford. Great. Very good. But you know, that's a great example of the sooner you can weed out yes. or, or mm -hmm. send yourself in a direction like, I, I might like this, but not that. Or, I might, you know, that's, that's the benefit. A lot of kids don't ever get that even through college. Some get it mm -hmm. in college if there's a education program or whatever that gives you that experience but you know it's so great the earlier you can figure out what feels right to you 
and eliminate some things, then it helps you focus on the direction you want to go in. So that's that's pretty pretty good to learn at your age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad it, um, I eliminated that out of everything else that mm -hmm. I'm deciding to do when I'm older. So. <coughs> good but job. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> Thank you for telling us about it. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Um, I'm Lauren. I'm doing my senior project at a salon in West Bridgewater. It's called Rizzo and Company. Um, I absolutely love it. It's been a wonderful experience. I love everyone I work with. It's like it's a nice fit, and I learn something new every day. I just learned how to shampoo, and they're believe it or not, it's a lot more complicated than you think. And <laughs> You've been doing it wrong all this time. I, well, I must have been. <laughs> oh, I, believe it. I believe it's more because it's a different experience oh, when you totally go there is. and somebody does it than oh, when yeah. you try to do it. It's crazy, but um, they last week I was there. They were getting me. They were going to do my hair for prom, and we're out back, and I learned how to flat iron and blow out and dye extensions, which I never thought I was going to get that far in learning, but we're out back trying to rush these extensions to get an ombre done and it didn't take the color, so we have dye all over our hands hiding it from the client and yeah. <laughs> hoping she won't see, mm. but it's nice that I've gotten to learn actually how to dye because in the fall I will be going to Paul Mitchell. So wow. I've already kind of know how to do majority of the stuff. And like the second day I started interning there, my boss just was like, so I'm thinking about keeping you. And I was like, all right, well, I'd love to stay. So I'll right. be staying there for a summer job. And it's amazing. I work with <clears throat> clients. Like I love working with people. All of like, it's just, it, I love like the atmosphere that we have there. It's so nice. It's you walk in, everyone, it's like a smile. Everyone leaves happy, and that's how I want my clients to feel like because you want people to want to come back to you, and mm -hmm. it's just amazing. And I know that that's what I want to do. I want to be successful in what I do, and I want to own my own salon just like how my uh -huh. career advisor does. So it was, I definitely hope that kids next year do this because it's the best experience. I think school was. Being in school every day is different than being out and working every day. And I definitely like working better than <laughs> reading books and doing schoolwork. Do you guys have a consensus among you? We'll find out, I guess. How many days out of the building a week would be manageable or ideal? Some are out every day. They're out every day. Yes. Every day. Yeah. Well, most, uh, most are out every day. Peyton okay. is not, because to commute into Boston, expense-wise, yeah. is a thing. So she does two long days, but it's only hours on the AP. So Jess, let me ask you a question first. So how do you do the AP when you're out every day? Uh, well, luckily my schedule was, the way it worked out was, they were back-to-back -back, um, on my schedule. So um, if my classes were 10.30 to, um, or it would be like, 9.30 to 11.30 because they're each an hour class. Um, so there's hour requirements. So luckily I wouldn't have to go like 9.30 to 10.30 and then come back one to two ever. Um, okay. But it, was, it just sometimes was a hassle because um, you'd be trying to work on something. So if it'd be in the middle of the day too because um, I'm a lacrosse player so I practice at 2.30 every day. So I'd have to leave right at two or else I'd be late and wouldn't be good. Coaches don't so, like that. Yeah, exactly. And, um, there's obviously business hours. So Foxborough Cable, for instance, is open 9.30 to 5 every day. Um, and because I have practice, I can't go in past 2 because when I get out of practice, it'll be closed. Um, so unless there's opportunities like meetings like this that are being filmed, um, it's pretty much only during the office hours. So if I have to go to school for two of the, from 9.30 to 2 every day, that's four and a half hours. Um, if I have to take up two of those hours um, like every day, it can be a problem. Um, but really, if you find a way to work around it, um, it's a great experience. Right. Thank you. Some people moved there, like my Euro class. There were some kids who we had at seventh period, but they could move it to first period because there was a first period class that we're into. So they could just come in in the morning and then leave for whatever they were doing. Very good. It's another thing that teachers did. They, they can post all the, their assignments, they can put their PowerPoints, so even students can get all this information. The right yeah. moto, the right different accounts themselves. So. The teachers are also working through this as well. And not only was it 
just as Jess was saying, to say that you've got that class from 9.30 to 11.30, it's the fact that it's a rotating schedule. Mm -hmm. So they were really needing to plan because that schedule could change every day for them and it did change unless it was in that first period constant. So it was a learning experience. What I really love is they not only learned about the, what the possible career is like, what the job is, but to speak to what you were just speaking about, you know, to learn about customer service and why that's important no matter your business and so many other practical skills that are going to help you in life, whether you open your own salon, whether you're working in a hospital, that so many of you spoke to things they learned about, you know, who's their client, who's their customer, and what other skills they had to bring to the job or learn. I think that's just as important as learning the technical things of what you do. So, okay. yeah, Steve. Um, to the students who learned that they didn't want to do something or that they wanted to work with a group that they didn't expect they might want to, um, I, I think it's very interesting because I, I hope that it, it's, it's teaching you how to empathize with others who are doing the job that you don't want to do because we all have special gifts and superpowers, right? But, you know, I, I don't want to do some things, you know, somebody talked about how the, the clerical was a downside piece for them, but the people that are in the clerical business are fantastic because they have to pull your documents quickly or whatever it is. So when you came back to, our, to the, school, the student body in general here, I hope you can convey that, you know, there's an empathy for other people that do jobs that one might not want to do and, and respect and see what you know their excellence and what they do is I, I hope that you take that away I don't I'm not preaching but intentionally but um, I hope you see that there's so many different things we have to do in the adult world and you saw it firsthand I was proud of you guys awesome. Katie. I just want to make a quick cup comment first of all it seems like that the staff and um, Ellen were very accommodating mm -hmm. to the demands and to the different uh, variables that were affecting each of the individual schedules. So I just want to recognize that and thank them um, because it was obviously a lot of teamwork that, that made this possible for, for kids who were taking AP classes or maybe were taking other classes that they needed to accommodate. The other thing I'm struck by is the diversity of the different um, projects and I love that because all of us are different, you know, and I just think it's awesome that everybody had, has had an opportunity to pursue what it was that, and what it is that they love to do. And finally, I just want to thank the families because, you know, the families were supportive of, of all of their endeavors, but also, you know, you talk about the ambassadors, you know, um, they come from families and I think we need to recognize that, you know, that that's saying a lot about where they come from as well. So I just want to thank them for being supportive of of those projects. And I know we have to move on, but I, I want to just thank the students both for spending so much time here tonight, but also for being our, our first ones. Mm -hmm. The school committee uh, has talked with the superintendent and the principal about increasing opportunities like this and getting you out of the classroom and getting you real world learning experiences, but it takes a first group to do it. Mm -hmm. So thank you for taking the risk and sharing your positive stories. And I'm sure this will grow. As mm -hmm. Tom said, I think we'll see more and more. And anything else? Very proud of them. Thanks good a for lot. you for taking Good luck Great next job. week with your presentation. Before they leave, I'm glad you went to Mrs. Pillsbury because if you recall, part of our um, our move last September to bring Mrs. Pillsbury on as our employee full time, this, this was the kind of thing that we knew would really happen in a good way, so thanks, Ellen. Yeah. Can't say enough about what she does, honestly. Jess, I was serious. That's well, nice. Yeah. Good night. Honestly, I think that's a problem with you think it's just a monitor issue? The actual TV. Why don't you just give it like a little whack? <laughs> like we like used to in the old days. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. You're thanks. <laughs> Okay, moving right along. Well, hey, hey, uh, double duty tonight. Yes, double duty tonight. Social Good studies time. curriculum. Yes. yes. I'm going to turn this right over to Dr. Berto. All right. Well, as you know, we have our six year <coughs> curriculum cycle, and this year we are studying the programs for wellness, K 12, and history and social science. The year is coming to a close. 
our wellness curriculum review will be presented the findings for that in the fall our department head is on maternity leave so she will although that study is done will be um, joining us in the fall but this evening we have our social studies review and before I turn it over to the three of them it has been a lot of work by the number of teachers regular ed special ed teachers from across the district and although our curriculum frameworks for history and social science are 2003 they've not revised them. Massachusetts um, has not revised them since then and we've had curriculum reviews at that point but we really looked at the new English language arts the most recent English language arts framework because it incorporates the content literacy standards within that curriculum and really the authentic literacy of reading and writing across the curriculum. So we had that, you're going to hear about another document and really looking at teaching for global understanding and what is the strength of our current program, what are areas of improvement, recommendations that we have for professional development, for materials, our textbooks and really what we learned over the course of this year and where we need to move forward. So I will turn it over to Diane and um, let her start and talk about the elementary Could piece we, and then we will continue. We have only two names on our... Yes. So, well, yeah, first is so she's yes. So. in the middle. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I, first of all, I love, I love that we, you had cross-department people in your committee, including special education, mm -hmm. English, so that's mm. so. I was going to start with that. So, for the people at home. Right. Diane Casilli, K-8, Director of ELA Social Studies in Title I. Holly Geffers, High School English. Uh, Tom Murray, High School Social Studies Department Ed. So our team consisted of, I think there was about 15 of us, and it was a wide range of people. It wasn't just social studies teachers. We brought in special educators, um, and Holly, English teachers also were part of the committee. Uh, that, representation went from grades 1 through 12 so it was very di diverse group um, and as Dr. Bertos mentioned that our content standards are from 2003 so we did um, do some research and we uh, spent a lot of time reading the Na National Council for Social Studies we looked at their standards and we also looked at a document that's just recently come out um, in light of thinking about having students be college and career ready um, they took the, in the social studies domain wanted to look at college career and civic like how civic life how can we prepare our students to be responsible city citizens in our global community as we move forward so we spent a lot of time reading that document which really focuses on something called the inquiry arc um, which has kids ha as we present students with questions having them really to think about developing their own compelling questions for research and doing some investigation analysis and exploration um, so it's not so much more and it's really a way of thinking about learning the content of social studies not so much as teaching you know the facts and historical mm -hmm. events it's really giving them equipping them with the skills that they need to be able to go out and find that information and look at different perspectives um, and making decisions for themselves so that was really what guided our inquiry so when we looked, um, so we did some research, we read those documents, um, we looked at our own curriculum, current curriculum documents, and with that light, we found that we're doing a lot of good things here in Foxborough that are, so I'm going to start with the elementary level, um, that we have a developmentally appropriate curriculum, that our teachers find the documents that we've created are helpful to them. The, another positive finding is our students, our teachers' knowledge of the content, um, that we're addressing the geography standards across the curriculum. Uh, another strength is our writing across the curriculum. Teachers definitely use writing authentic literacy as a way to assess students' understanding of the content that they're teaching them, um, that our teachers collaborate. Unfortunately, it's not as much as we'd like with all the changes we've had with the, the Common Core, with the new standards for literacy and math. That's where our focus has been. We're hoping to shift that. We have a plan. Um, so to offer more opportunities for collaboration in the social studies content. Um, and, and that we have a lot of a variety of field trips and outside programs that we bring in to supplement the social studies curriculum. So thinking about those as being our positive findings at the elementary level, where we'd like to go next is we really, as part of the review, we also took a look at Mike Schmoker's book, Focus which really think, has us think about um, what's most important for our students to learn at the end of the grade level that they can t carry on to future learning. So with that in mind, we looked at our current standards and we identified those core standards that we felt were most important for us to address at each grade level. 
Um, now that we've done that, we need to go back and relook at our curriculum, re develop, revise our um, units of study using the backwards design model, and um, com look at our essential questions, look at our resources. Do we, do we have sufficient resources right now to supplement those curriculums? And um, that, so that's some of the summer curriculum work that will take place this summer. Grade four is going to look at piloting a textbook to help supplement their curriculum. They look at regions of the world. Um, right now, use, we use a lot of supplementary resources. So looking at some of the programs that were out there, we've identified two. And our goal is to have teachers vo volunteer to pilot them and to make a decision at the end of next year if, that's the way, if one is better than the other and if that's the way that we truly want to go. Um, moving on to the middle school. Again, we found that the curriculum at the middle school was developmentally appropriate, that we're adequately addressing the Massachusetts history standards, um, that teachers' knowledge of the content is definitely a positive finding, and that in terms of when we looked at the, this they call the document C3 document, the college career and civic, civic life document, that the global perspective is really important, um, that we felt like that was in good shape at the, in grades seven and eight at the middle school. We know that that's an area that we need to look at in terms of professional development and our curriculum at the lower levels. Um, instruction, we use a variety of um, small and whole group, teacher um, interactive lectures, um, and that we have some common assessments in place, and that we have more recently had some opportunities for vertical collaboration. So our the structure at the middle school allows for grade level collaboration on a frequent basis. We haven't been able to do the vertical as much. We've done a little bit. So um, they found that as a positive finding to be able to have that, those discussions. So in terms of the middle school, our needs for moving forward, um, we want to conform, confirm the core standards at each grade level. Grade five is actually looking now that they've identified the most important standards. So they're looking at the resources they currently have and they're questioning, do they need a textbook versus what we currently use? Um, so we're working through that this summer and we'll make a decision so they may pilot something or we might decide that we have what we have is sufficient and we just need some additional copies so that we have enough for all students. Are you saying we don't have a textbook for grade five? Grade five doesn't have a history, they have a very old history textbook, but they mm. use lots of supplemental materials. So we might be looking at possibly acquiring a new? Yes. Okay. But we don't want to, we're not sure. The yeah. textbook issue, and this goes way back and why they haven't, the, our state has not renewed their standards since 2003. And part, part, so part of the challenge becomes Massachusetts sort of established the standards from way back, mm. um, what, what they felt it was right to teach here, but it doesn't always align with might be done in some of the larger states, such as Texas or California, and, and national companies produce textbooks where they can sell the most. So it, it has happened in Massachusetts that while we may agree that these are the right things to teach or the right sequence, of, of main focus or standards, um, it doesn't always align with what's out there pu in published form. So that's why you Got don't, you ha okay. we haven't seen a textbook at each level um, because Massachusetts sometimes can be an outlier in terms of what, what needs to be taught and we usually believe we know better you know, than <laughs> right. some of the other states. But that doesn't mean that we can find a published product that just comes in and says, here you go, fifth grade. Right. You know, okay. and I think that's the challenge that we've talked about for absolutely yes. years and then and they years. look at the, the total amount of content but in the textbooks me. program and do we need all of that for the cost that's associated right. with mm. it or can we better address our standards through some other resources so that's where we're at right now thank you for that clarification that makes it yeah. much more of a challenge I think than yeah. some of the other curriculum areas because you might find a textbook that's you know, a third of it, 40% of it is what we're supposed to teach and then are you going to buy it and ignore the rest? And so mm -hmm. it, it does become a decision-making process for them that is much more organic, I would say, than in their expertise is much more required to really dive in and say, does this meet our needs? So. The textbook is not our curriculum. Right. 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 Kind of piggybacking on that, it was supposed to be a world history test to pass to graduate, right. that was back in the day. Then and they were going to go to uh, U.S. history, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of debate on it. And right now, there's no MCAS to graduate for history, mm -hmm. so we're kind of in a. So that's part of the reason why Holly's part of the team is we're we're really gearing the kids towards the Park test, and the Park test itself is it's a skill based test. So we're looking at building skills, and that's part of the exciting piece. So in terms of our curriculum, we're aligned, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, 
We continue to build our curriculum, which we have it online, which is nice, so we can really share a lot of these documents. We continue, um, you've heard the term Edmodo earlier today, and we, it's, um, it's, it's, it's an incredible tool that can communicate with students when they, they miss a day at school. Parents can also have the keys if, what's the upcoming homework assignment? You can post your PowerPoints. You can use quizzes. There's so many different things that we're doing now that we would like to even get away from textbooks at some point, you know, and uh, to continue to build our own resources and materials, not to be bound to one. So, and again, you look at how much textbooks cost, you're talking mm -hmm. about $17,000 for a grade level. So if we can do it better, in our way, that's something that we really want to look at. So in terms of our curriculum area, mm -hmm. focus we read this past summer, okay? Debbie had us read this book within the Ed Leaders, and it was awesome because it really gave us a different perspective that we need to narrow down our curriculum and what is the most important pieces of our curriculum, and that's what's going to happen this summer. So by grade level, ninth grade is world history. We'll have the ninth grade teachers look in our, our current standards and, and really what is the focus what should we be fo what should their takeaways be at the end of the year and we're going to have a professional development this summer on dbqs and we're really excited about this i can pass this around in dbqs are document based questions it's something that ap has been using forever so it's looking at documents it's higher level thinking and if it's good for our ap kids why isn't it good for every kid so we really have this that we're going to embed this into our curriculum for all ninth grade students. All 10th grade students, all 11th grade students are going to be using these. And again, interpreting data, that's what they're going to have to do, and that's what they have to do in the real world. When we just had that group of students earlier, that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So um, it's going to be, a, I think it's going to really dovetail into we're it. Jump. And we're, also, we're actually bringing that down to, definitely down to the seventh grade level um, with the document-based questions, because it really is having kids look at documents and do that close analytical reading, and then building an argument um, mm -hmm. based on what they find in the document. So, our seventh and eighth grade social studies are really excited about it. We're sharing it with our English, the ELA teachers as well, um, and we're even having sixth grade teachers look at it because that's impressive yeah, and a joy to the English teacher's heart. <laughs> <laughs> and si singing my song as a lawyer, I love all I this know. argumentative writing that they're doing and all fact finding and document based and supporting their arguments from right. the the original sources. So that's great. I love this. Yeah, and it, 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 it's exciting. And again, just go. Going back to the roots of this, it's, we have a very strong leadership team here who cares about curriculum. That's so important to us. A and our teams are incredible. The history department, well, I can't say enough good stuff about this group, but, it, but our whole department itself, uh, our electives are, are packed, and we take that as a badge of honor, which is, which is pretty awesome when other get 30 in a class because they want to learn the stuff. And, and that's really um, something that we really enjoy, okay, as a collective department. In terms of instruction, we use a lot of the history alive materials. And what it does, it, it, it incorporates the multiple intelligences. Mm -hmm. History is no longer a lecture-based course. It's a different history course than some of us grew up with that, oh, okay, I got to rec recall, re recite, remember, retain, and then unfortunately, a lot of times it's gone. So we're doing a lot of project-based learning. We continue to integrate this. Um, as a department, we share with materials. Uh, there's no agenda, no, this is my lesson, it's our lesson as a collective department. And we've had some great opportunities within our professional development days to share and uh, to talk about it. And I know that it's been mentioned before, but Kristen Dorico was nominated as Massachusetts Teacher of the Year, which is just outstanding. And to have she her as a resource. At least the top 10. She was in the top 10. And, That's so. awesome. One of our high school teachers. So let, yes, let's compliment her. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's in others who are taking risks in terms of our, our AP numbers are through the roof. Um, mm -hmm. You know, take an AP psych, that was the first year we offered it this year, and we had close to, we had over 50 students who took the course. Uh, wow. AP government being offered again, AP Euro. These are just some courses that kids love taking. Uh, they're very popular within the school, and we continue to do that. So the instruction, uh, CNN. A lot of our teachers use that CNN student news. It's the first 10 minutes first, and it's great because it creates that conversation and then how do you integrate that and how do you talk about well we're working on imperialism well this part of Africa now you can kind of bring the history of life and, and that's what we try to do on a daily basis uh, the assessments we're very fortunate because what we've been doing we we're ahead of the curve um, district determining measures which has been talked about in many occasions uh, a lot of people are reluctant and afraid and we've been doing these for a couple of years where we've ha given students 50 questions before the class itself. So first week of um, any of our World History, U.S. History 1 or U.S. History 2, they get 50 
questions. Every teacher will give the same 50 questions. That's part of the midterm exam. So we can see growth. We can, we can recognize who's growing. Um, and then as teachers, we can have some great conversations at our, at our professional development days of, my kids didn't do as well on the economics questions. How did yours do better? And we can have these conversations. It's a measure. So this is something that we do with our midterms and our final exams. Um, the DBQs, we're going to embed as part of our common assessment. And, and again, can this is- I just is, read a couple? Because I'm so oh, excited about this brochure. Please. Which is the first time I saw. So, you know, you keep mentioning the DBQs, document-based questions, but, you know, this is the kind of thing, I'm going to read you three, a couple examples. This is the kind of thing that if this is how the content is approached, it's, it's got to get kids more excited, more passionate about history, civics, mm -hmm. and government. So, let me, Valley Forge, would you have quit? Yeah. Well, all of a sudden, I want to know what I mean. I would have. Maybe I would. <laughs> um, progressivism, where will you put your million dollars? That is an awesome question. And then politics or principle? Why did LBJ sign the Civil Rights Act of 1964? Mm. I mean, this, this yeah. just mm. is, is very exciting, along with other yeah. things that I'll mention. We had the representative from the company come out to our meeting, and she was phenomenal. And now mm. she's going to come out and train uh, the, the middle school, oh, high school, exciting. social studies, and also the English department as well. So again, get everybody on the same page. So that's how we get to spend one of our days to start the school year, which is just, we're very excited about having this within our classes themselves. I think it's very exciting and it sounds like you're really building on stuff that you are doing in the classroom right now. I know one of the, one of the driest periods, or not driest, but it, my son was doing the Renaissance. He has Kelly McDonald who was on your committee. Yeah. and. It, as part of their renaissance learning, it wasn't just rote memorization, they had March Madness where they were debating one artist versus another artist and, and the kids really got into it. I said, well, who do you have? He said, I have Michelangelo. I said, oh, <laughs> good job. But I think just to get them, instead of memorizing facts, they had to write about it, but they had to debate it and back it up and support their argument and go head to head in a March Madness format. I thought that was a great and creative idea. I want to go so, back to school. Yeah. <laughs> Learning is so much more fun than when I went through. Um, in terms of our resources, we, we have a great social studies writing lab over here. Um, I, can, I can't say enough good stuff because we've asked for things and, and you guys come through and, and you make it a priority um, to make our jobs a lot easier with the resources. I know so many people at other school districts that it's a fight to get resources and here we've been very fortunate that you guys have, have done an outstanding job in terms of providing for us and, and helping us get the resources that we need. Um, we continue, again, we don't want to spend to spend. That's not our purpose at all. But, you know, in terms of our world history textbooks, they're dated, but it's a resource so we can buy used. And they might not look as good, but in terms of the history is there and, and they're excellent and we're able to put a lot of that stuff online and, and use a lot of different resources that we're able to develop on our own. Our professional development days have been excellent uh, in, in terms of department sharing. Some of our best days we spend as a department and, and bring in your best lesson plan. Okay, let's talk about our world history teachers sit together, our US 1, US 2, and, and just being able to discuss what's happening in a classroom. And earlier this year they did a, the, the mock election, okay? They did oh, right. things on mock election. They talked about uh, passing a bill. And, and these are things that we want done across, not just one or two individual oh. teachers. If you get lucky enough to get Mr. Carroll or Mr. Rico or Mr. whoever, we want everybody doing it. So that's really something that we want to take some time this summer to make sure that happens. Um, so I think one of our strengths is it's collegialism. Uh, it is a department of sharing that we were able to share materials without an ego itself. It's, it's, we're very fortunate. Um, so this summer, there is, uh, there is a change in the AP uh, U.S. history uh, test itself. So we have two teachers who are going uh, to a, a one-week conference. Uh, both Ms. Lonergan and Mr. Rico are going to go to that. Mr. Kayser is going to another conference for, for AP uh, uh, Euro European history. So we have a lot of people who are going. We don't want to spend now. We're going to look at resources see what works best and then talk to other districts and what did you like and what we're in the age of communication and technology that we can do that and being part of these collegial groups um, it's exciting and in November the National Conference for History is coming to Boston so we couldn't be more thrilled we're going in there it's a, it's a Friday Saturday Sunday um, 
Amy mentioned something about getting a suite in there. I don't know if she's going to be able to come through with that, but <laughs> it's no, I'm just kidding. That's a joke. But we're going to be going. Really? But, but I, I can remember the last time. Up, I yeah. remember the last time it was in He's Boston. Open. Well, why not? Well, I, I remember Dream going, day. and that was a great. That oh, was wonderful wait. to have it so close by because it's an opportunity for mm. us to send a real core group mm. of people. And the fa I didn't realize it was the fall after. You did your review, so the timing could not be oh, better. Oh, it's a lottery. We were very fortunate. Everything kind of fell right into line. Um, one of the things I've noticed and really liked since since I got on uh, on the school committee was when we have um, the educators come from different departments and talk. There's this I don't know. There's a, like a chemistry, okay? And I, I think it's created a lot by you know the executive management and the staff and, and the expertise. And I just had to lean over to Amy and ask what a vertical um, PLC was because I felt like an idiot and I, I didn't want to ask you folks on national <laughs> television, but um, <laughs> worldwide television. So as you were talking about integrating the social studies programs across other subject matters, so there's sort of a, an integration. Yep. Is that where the vertical PLCs come in? So you have, say, an English subject matter expert in there with the social studies? Absolutely. I'm just kind of. So, so the PLC is the professional. I don't know. Sure. You know. The PLC is the professional learning communities. And right. these are opportunities that teachers can take during a free block, uh, before school and after school, and to be able to have a small group meet together. But yeah. what, what are they doing in art right now? What are we doing in English? And we've been able to line up many it's not perfect but we've been able to line up when Holly might be going through uh, a certain historical period she might be covering Walden well could I be doing Martin Luther King at the same time mm -hmm. so I have to go in a certain order so sometimes we have to rework the English so that way we're touching on these things at the same time when we're teaching the Cold War the crucible it's a perfect match mm -hmm. and this yeah. is what you want because all of a sudden the kids say oh I get this you know so you it's have these moments of uh-huh you know so I'm sure Holly could speak to that even yeah I better. think it was last year that we looked at the English um, actually we sat down with Caitlin and Sally Brown and looked at how can we make it so that when we get to a certain part in literature it in American literature it parallels where they are in American history so this year was the first year that we've moved to American Lit. It's going to be a two-year course, um, which would mirror what they do in history. So we'll go from Puritans through, I think yeah. it's Transcendentalist in the um, 10th grade, and then from the, um, we'll begin with the Realist and go So that might even be considered horizontal grade. alignment, because horizontal means across right. mm -hmm. courses at the high school, whether it's, even if it's across departments, about the same level. And, and vertical is, for example, the opportunity for the middle school teachers to meet with the high school department vertically as kids go up in the grades to coordinate what are they learning down here, how does that prepare them well for what they're going to be faced with at the high school. So all of that is important, and, and people like Diane coordinate all of that, all of, all of the alignment and all the directions. This right? year and, at, the and Tom. at the middle school, we found the vertical for the social studies that we had an opportunity for seventh and eighth grade social studies teachers to work together. And they actually looked at, revised their essential questions. So they're using, which is like the big idea, um, that they post for students that, that's focused on their learning. But they have developed essential questions that will be used both in seventh and eighth grade that applies to their content that gets kids thinking. An essential question is a question that gets them thinking, but there's really no one right answer. Mm -hmm. You answer it by backing it up with your evidence. So that was one um, mm -hmm. example of something we did this year. And they found that very valuable. And to even be able to talk about the content and what they're teaching and you know which parts are going to be our responsibility to make sure kids truly walk away understanding. Um, and sometimes it's even just as simple as having a conversation about vocabulary. Seventh grade said to sixth grade um, during this time when we had the opportunity, you know, if you could teach them, you do a great job at topography. That's one word they haven't heard when they got to us. Sixth grade said, oh, that's an easy fix. Mm -hmm. But um, so that's one piece of the vertical. And then also thinking about um, we, the argument writing was new for the middle school. So both English and social studies work together to make sure we're using the same language with kids. But even to talk about, OK, so what, what kind of argument did they write in sixth grade? What were the requirements? What, what did that student work look like? To share that with seventh grade, so seventh grade knows where to start off and to build them towards next so that when they get to eighth grade, so we're building layer upon layer. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Taylor students said that collaboration was mm -hmm. I mean it was loud and clear that young student that that young girl talked about collaboration and here we are 
collaborating like mm -hmm. crazy. It's great. Mm -hmm. it's, it's great. The, the teachers I'm sorry are very to excited. You. I apologize, but thank you very much. No, it's great. So we can go on to week. Coming out of the re review, we want to have a very concrete plan of how we're going to move forward. So, um, which is what we have up here. So basically, May, June, we're going to look at finalizing those four standards, um, looking at you know possible textbooks, um, figuring out ways to get that those vertical PLC meetings. We've had one. How are we going to plan more? Um, this summer, we'll do um, we're going to do some inventory of globes and atlases. It's always important to update those. They get well they're well used. Um, <laughs> Then this summer we'll do our curriculum work. Um, the Massachusetts Department of Ed has some model curriculum units that were developed by teams of teachers across the state in different content areas. So now that we have our core standards, we want to look at those units, see do they fit our needs, and if they do, great, let's dive in and really learn them. If not, then we'll devise our own units. Um, we'll come up with a plan for the pilot next year. Our goal is to maybe have teachers out of both materials, you know, first half of the year one book, second half the second second book and see which one's best. Um, I know Tom has plans for curriculum work at the high school. And then in August, we're excited about the professional development from the document-based questions project. They're going to come up and do that for us. And then um, in October, we're going to provide professional development. The committee was able to read and learn in depth about that college, career, and civic life framework. And we think it's really important that all staff hear that message and learn about that document because it's really having us look at global perspective. Um, so not only global perspective, but even just perspectives <coughs> in our own history from the different groups of people. <coughs> so we want everyone, to, all staff, to learn about that. So that will be part of our October PD. Um, and they have that inquiry arc, which was what I talked about before, you know, the compelling, having them have, giving them an essential question, have the kids start asking more questions and finding the answers and then making decisions um, and sharing that with others. So that will be in October. Um, November, we want to send representatives to the National Council of Social Studies PD. We're really excited about that. Um, January, we hope to stop and revisit, okay, how's things, how are things going with the, our new initiatives with the DBQ project. Let's look at some samples of student work, um, maybe have some conversations about the October PD. How's, how will that impact our future curriculum work? Um, look at our new assessments. Some of them will be district determined measures. How are they going? And then in June, do the same things, um, revisit how we've gone from January to June, make decisions about textbooks. Do we want to move ahead with the textbook adoption or not? What are some more curriculum revisions that might need to be done in the summer? Um, and then beyond that, we want to make sure that we continue to offer professional development um, focused on the content of social studies, because I don't think we've done a great job with that in the past. I think we need to bring it back into our focus. This past year, I was able to participate in a workshop series in Sharon um, from primary source. It was based on um, global perspective, and I actually took a lot away from it, um, and I hope to be able to bring that back for our teachers from when we're ready to move in that direction with our curriculum. Um, and then field trips is a conversation we need to have in terms of um, what we're doing at each level. Is it enough, too much? Um, and then continue to work at having time for professional learning communities and uh, time to score student work. Do you all sleep? <laughs> no, a lot of work. This is amazing. So we're all the really detail. excited because we, we feel like we have a good vision for social studies moving forward. So, and it's really exciting because we feel like it's building on the work we were doing previously with the Common Core. So, you know, not to get ahead of ourselves, but a lot of I've heard a lot of global citizenship, civics, I know. citizenship, and it's dovetailing with some of the work we're doing on our strategic plan, and this Just is very talking about exciting that a week stuff. Ago tonight. So I'm, I'm filing it away for next week's meeting, but um, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> yes, that rang a lot of bells for me, I'm too. I'm seeing goals. I'm seeing strategies here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's great. I, I have to say, I, this is one of the most impressive reports I've seen. It really is. I'm going to tell you that. It's excellent. I think Diane, it's really Diane wonderful. Was outstanding. It's, a, it's, it's really be, for a bunch of reasons. One, it's hitting a lot of our current issues, mm -hmm. the team point. And we've also talked a lot about interdisciplinary. You know, can we do more interdisciplinary, mm -hmm. particularly at the high school, where, you know, it used to be every, every department was a silo. Mm -hmm. Clearly, you're not silos anymore. And just the recommendations you have in here give such a concrete plan mm. for that interdisciplinary work. And on the same note, it makes me so happy with the curriculum leadership structure 
that we have because our department heads are strong at their mm. in their departments and having Diane be a literacy expert that brings that into social studies content couldn't be better we've got Holly sitting here I there's so many things about this your timeline is fabulous just the fact you have a timeline in there <laughs> and there were just so many things that are exciting and interesting mm. and really lay out you know exactly where we are and and well, I know that people in the community, as we've heard, uh, are very interested in civic life and how we're preparing kids to be citizens locally, globally, and, and to understand civics, which they think is, is lost in, in the current mm -hmm. education. This certainly is a concrete reminder that it's so not lost <laughs> that, that you do it a lot. So I, I couldn't be happy with this. I want to compliment Amy and your entire team. This is a really one of the best um, review reports I think I've seen. Well, and I'll just build on that. So, uh, Tom, you mentioned Diane. I'll tell you, tonight, Diane and Allison really shined, I think, mm -hmm. as they so often do. Yeah. So when you go back tomorrow, because Allison's not here, please tell her we said that. I will. I'll let and, you know. Tom, your passion is awesome, mm. even at 9 o'clock at night. Yes. Yes. I agree. So I, I think everybody's contributing. I was going to say, too, what I love about this, I mean, not a, you mentioned, you know, people at home, but I'm thinking about your, your uh, colleagues they see what the plan is and I and I think anywhere that you work you want to know you know to have a <coughs> blueprint of where you're going what you're doing what your um, vision is I think that's awesome because then you get everybody on board and every and the, the, you know there's just communication between yep. people there's um, transparency I just you know I think that's another really um, uh, wonderful example of leadership to provide that to the people that you're working with as well as as well as coming to us and and, and sharing it with us so. impressive and exciting I have yeah. to say Debbie do you want a motion to approve the report or are you fine with it uh, yeah I mean I think it's I don't know if this committee approves the report or just I think it has gets the report I mean yeah. uh, we want to be very clear yeah, you're not with the committee for specific no. actions here, I want to so. be very clear with the committee you know where we are where we're going in every curriculum area that's the whole purpose of your supervising the mm -hmm. curriculum review I think based so on our comments you have our consensus yes. wonderful our blessing if we <laughs> go when, after we go through as far as the pilots then if we end up with a adoption of a textbook right. we'll yeah. need your approval at and that they'll time be, they'll, they'll be back we'll be for that. Mm -hmm. excellent yeah. Bobby. I want to remind Tom and all your exuberance to you continue to thank thank us but I think the school committee in itself needs to also be mi mindful very mindful to thank the community because they have supported so many years our budget at town meeting yes. and without that and this, this is a takeaway from a day on the hill, but just recently in a community north of Boston, the school committee members realized the importance of professional, you know, your professional training days, because I'm just, with everybody tired for one or two hours in, in meetings after school, was not giving the real training that people needed, so they tried to add within the school year two professional days. We have three, don't we? We have five. Oh, we have five. The school committee wanted- Minus the first day, which is professional, but it's, it's the opening day and there's more building-based stuff going on. Well, so this, four, this- Four, really. Yeah. This school committee wanted to add two within the day. They, they, they were, it upset the parents terribly. They said that is going to upset all our uh, home care plans with everybody working. There were two school committee members up, and it upset the, so many parents, they had a write-in campaign to oust the two incumbents. Oh. I mean, so we... I think we need to turn around and say thank you to. Glad we're here. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I mean, that. Back to you, your point. Is it a vote to accept the report? That's all I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. That, I, I I'm think trying to think. After you said it, I'm trying to rewind like other times. It's a vote I, to accept. I think, I think because it's a formal report. Yeah, I think that's it great. It just shows our. Make a motion to accept. Thank I'll you. Second. Social studies curriculum review. All in favor? Thank you very much, okay. guys. Yeah. All right, Joe. Good night. Unbelievably good. Right. So, I said he makes me want to go back and teach. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, yeah. it does. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mrs. Lord gave Mr. Yukon a great segue to a town meeting update. Mm. I think. <laughs> yes. Um, mm. I'll just do it quick, and then I'll let Bill do the specifics. I I I sent. I was going to forward it to you, and I, I might have forgotten. Um, I sent uh, an email thanking, um, letting our staff know that the budget was approved at town meeting. And then I also sent one to um, Paul DeFazio, who's mm -hmm. the chair of the advisory committee this year, and to CC Bill Keegan and Randy, and our three advisory committee liaisons, Excellent. who were Larry Thomas, Larry Stern, and um, Heidi, Croc um, Heidi, Croc Heidi Proctor. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And I, we just really honestly felt this was one of the best years we've had with very productive meetings with them uh, where we could actually have conversations two-way about the challenges we face in public education and um, how how that was really valuable to us and I want to compliment them because they they start out by becoming familiar with your budget we had um, budget subcommittee members this year which were really helpful to us and it's Stephen you Bruce mm -hmm. I want to thank you but I think the whole thing really just worked really well not that we didn't discuss some issues or you know what's the expectations of the community and how are we meeting them and how does the budget support that and some of those conversations were really important for us to understand the expectations of people beyond who we may interface with in the community thought it was really helpful many thanks to people at town meeting who seem to do a lot of people seem to do a lot of work ahead of time so that we got to town meeting with all of the questions that people had answered so Thank you to everybody who helped us. I'll turn over Bill. He can talk about capital and all the things that excite him every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, obviously the, the support we got not only in our operating budget but in our capital budget, um, number of large projects that we're trying to accomplish this summer and uh, a lot of them on the IT side as far as uh, really trying to improve what we have as a uh, infrastructure here in the high school. Um, so it was really kind of uh, it was kind of nice to see that all of those projects, uh, all the way down to our standard stuff of you know bus replacement and copier replacement, but uh, you know the network infrastructure change that's going to happen here at the high school. Um, you know the issues uh, again. We've got a, a very large uh, change set of changes we're going to make, and some of that's based on revenue or, or CIP money that we got from last year. That's all going to now come together as one big uh, piece. So uh, we're really looking forward to that part of it, and I think the. Uh, the uh, overall support, I mean, really having nobody question uh, that we were on the right path, I think is, is really nice to see. So, um, you know, I don't know, I, you know, you can go into the details, you've all seen what we're doing on the, on the CIP, so I think that's not necessary at this point. But. Comments from the committee? Just to thank the, um, you know, the community for supporting uh, what, what everyone does here every day. Yeah, I want to thank the community as well. It was. Uh, it just flew right through, which was great. And mm -hmm. Debbie, I think your point about the support and work AdCom did mm -hmm. in support of that and preparation for that was a big help. I think you're spot on. Question. And I would like to issue just a little challenge uh, to our parents out there. Um, I think we could have had a little bit more of the younger audience from town in the auditorium. Mm -hmm. uh, as we sat there, there were a lot of our seniors, uh, not very many, not very many attendees in general yeah, that's uh, and and certainly not very many from the, s the school side and mm -hmm. we're fortunate to have the town support but I would never want to take that for granted and I know mm -hmm. it's very hard for us to get there and I know I wasn't there the entire night um, but just for those who didn't attend town meeting uh, I think it's important that we try to increase that democracy as much as we possibly can so just my own little two cents mm -hmm. thoughts as I looked around the room and speaking of civic engagement. And speaking of civic engagement. Anybody else? Steve, you want to add anything about town meeting? It was wonderful. It was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Yukna. <laughs> School committee vote to reappoint Ms. Deborah Spinelli as a voting member of the Bi County Collaborative Board of Directors for the 2014 15 school year. Yes, as you can see in your packet, this is the second year that this annual appointment is now required per legislation. So this will be this is something that you as a committee will be doing annually. Do we just need to make a motion? Yeah. I'd like to mo make a motion as written uh, to uh, nominate uh, Superintendent uh, Spinelli to the uh, BICO Board of Directors again, as as written and presented. Thank you. I'll second. 
Any further discussion? Yes, I think it's reappoint, not nominate. Just just so we're clear for, for Janet. Yes. Yeah. Friendly amendment to the okay. motion. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Friendly amendment accepted. It's in select. Accepted. Second. Yes. Yep. Th thank you. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Five zero, Janet. Thank you. Thank you. And then this is new this year. So um, just to give you a little context, because we have two um, BICO collaborative agenda items. The, as you know, in the last couple of years, there's been a lot more political action and legislative action on special education collaboratives. And if you've been reading a couple of years ago, there was a problem with a collaborative on the North Shore. So that usually sparks more scrutiny and then more structures for uh, monitoring the operations of collaboratives as a result. So it's, that makes it stronger because everybody's operating under the same rules. So some of these things that you see are coming as a result of new legislation and new attention um, in, in, in that circle at the state level for um, regional collaboratives for special education. So this is new. So while it's the second year you've had to reappoint me to the board and the, and the board consists of the superintendents of the mm -hmm. member districts, um, now um, Oops. Now, um, you must now approve a capital improvement policy for every collaborative we belong to. We only belong to this one. So, um, as you can see in the memo, our bi-county collaborative, which we are one of the members, is seeking your approval, and it has to be at least two-thirds of the member districts of the collaborative have to approve the policy. So you'll be one, and then all the different school committees in those towns, their votes will go back to the bi-county collaborative, and as long as two-thirds of the member districts approve the policy, then it will go into effect. Do, you, so, do we know how many members are in our district? On the bi are in the collaborative. Yeah, are I, I the do know that. Um, there are a lot more than there used to be. Let's see. I mean a, an approximate and number another, right now. Okay. Sitting around the table, at least a dozen, probably about. I, I'm good. I was going to say 15, but that some of them are a little bit more distant. But I'm going to say 12 to 15, and it does okay. it does shift because I know that, for example, Seekonk and Swansea used to belong just to uh, access a couple programs, but I don't think they do anymore. So I'm I'm unclear on this. So it could be anywhere between 12 and 15. And there's usually a dozen of us at the board. Fluctuates meeting. a little bit. It can. I don't. I don't know if it has recently, but I'm. I'm just not sure of the exact number right now. Okay, that's. Thank you. So, this is the policy that was developed and discussed at our recent board meeting. Uh, right now, the the bi county collaborative has no capital improvement plan or policy, so they've all they've always had to meet their capital needs through their regular budget, or if there was money left over at the end of the year with the approval of the board of, of um, uh, approval of the board if there's a you know, an excess to reallocate it for a capital need. So that's a, a little bit unplanned, and as a school districts operate, they plan for capital. So this is their new policy of um, their multi-year financial plan for prioritizing those larger projects. So I hope you've had a chance to look at it. It, it basically says that they intend to establish a capital reserve fund of about of up to $500,000. So that will occur over time, but they would like to, through this policy, um, establish that capital reserve fund, and then, just as our town does, prioritize their needs and use some of the capital reserve fund each year. Right, and the they do this with annual budget, retained uh, yes. earnings, grants, and and or gifts? Yes. That's how they raise the money? Yes. Okay. So because we're a member, we have to approve this policy? Yes. And then you bring it back? Then we let them know what your vote was, okay. and then they tally all the votes of the other member districts, and as long as two-thirds of the member districts approve it, <coughs> then it becomes their policy. Right now they have no policy and no capital plan or structure at all, so this is definitely groundbreaking for them. Is there any reason why we wouldn't approve it? Is no, because the, the, the state is, is advising collaboratives okay. to establish this so that they meet their needs in a, with forethought and not catch as catch can. The, any discussion that the uh, bill goes to the meetings of the business administrators from the member groups. I don't know if you've discussed it at your table or not. Yeah, I think the um, this is actually a very simplified uh, capital um, improvement policy 
compared to what we deal with as, as an example on the town side and, and for the schools, uh, the values are very low. When you look at a five-year threshold on an item, that's pretty consistent with most of us on capital, but $5,000 is actually a low amount. I mean, typically we would be looking yeah. at 25000 right. uh, on the you know, Foxborough Town side as really a capital item. Mm -hmm. So, but again, FICO is a much smaller entity in its, in its issues. I mean, it doesn't really own buildings and facilities like we do. It rents them and goes through that process. So uh, it's probably very much you know, in the right range there. The $500,000 thing, is, as you can read in this and what we've seen in the past, is they really don't have any kind of vehicle relative to uh, their infrastructure, uh, again, with their IT and, and things of that nature that they need to maintain. So. Um, what this allows them to do is effectively take leftover funding from a budget year, which can happen, just like we know it happens on our side. Um, and instead of reverting that back into the next year's budget or reverting it back to the districts, it allows them to retain it. Um, and, and again, under the director's uh, votes to do that. So uh, Deb would obviously have a say in that. But to be able to start to build that thing so that when they do want to do a, a 50000 or or $100,000 uh, you know, major project, it's no longer going to come back to us as a single year, uh, you know, request. It or be single item. Fun. Right. I know a few, a couple of years ago, they needed a new van. They don't own property, as Bill said. They don't own buildings. They don't own their own buses. But they do own a couple of vans and mm -hmm. minibuses. So when one, um, you know, broke down nice. and they needed a new one, <laughs> um, that had to be a, a single item. Like this year, this is what we need and we need to replace it ASAP. This is um, how we plan to do it. This is where we think. So rather than just trying to react like that, this this will allow them to have a plan and a funding Proactive method. Proactive rather than yes. reactive. And, they, and all the projects will still be approved by the board, but in a systematic way. Steve, yeah. Um, I'm, in, I'm, in favor, I'm in favor of voting in favor of adopting this. Um, normally, I'm one who likes to wait, let it marinate a little bit, and then come back to vote. But if we chose to vote on it tonight, I would vote in the affirmative, and, and I think it's also consistent historically with the past uh, school committees uh, in that we also take care of our uh, properties, and uh, that's the intent of this. And then also, um, and please someone correct me if I'm wrong, but this, this, these dollars can be looked at publicly and how they're spent. Oh, yes. absolutely. Right? Everything's and public. And so, that, yeah, that was an affirmative statement. Yes. So, um, do you want to make a motion to that effect? Well, if, if it's a consensus of the board, if it's, it's time now, I would make a motion that we accept as presented uh, the, uh, the uh, capital improvement policy for the, the uh, BICO and, and bring it, have uh, Superintendent Spinelli bring it back to the organization um, how, uh, how we vote. Good. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. I know they'll be very pleased. And if, if you want to know what my one question was when this was being discussed, I just want you to know I do represent you. I said, is, will our assessment for the students who attend your programs be going up? Right. To establish this fund, and the answer was no. I said, oh, in that case, yeah. that's great. <laughs> Thank you for taking us into consideration. Yeah. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss that yeah. point. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Mr. Yukna, FY14 budget update. Yes. Um, Basically, from last uh, period to this period, uh, we had about 87,000 as a projected surplus um, last month. We're now at about 73,000. Uh, really, that's all been um, used up in the utility line uh, on the gas side. It's uh, the, the one thing that has really changed. Uh, we have been and basically feel right now that our uh, what you're seeing in the um, surplus on the salary side is what it's going to be through the end of the year. We've kind of combed through every bit of that. Um, obviously, we won't know for another few weeks uh, where we're going to stand on the expense side. Um, but I will be coming back to you uh, at the, I guess, the 16th, probably, of June uh, with really what some of the uh, some major issues that we have to address. I think I've told you all along, uh, one of the things that we're uh, dealing with obviously is the little bit of extra cost that's been gone into the uh, the turf field uh, project uh, to do it right because we only have one shot at, at getting it completed here. Um, that, as you can see, um, shy of just uh, some barricade fencing that will be done around the parking lot uh, uh, hopefully next week, uh, is pretty much done at this point. Um, so I think the, uh, the community will be able to see what that outcome is pretty quickly. Um, we are moving very quickly on the data center now um, to make a lot of uh, that come to uh, 
to reality, um, working with both the town side. Uh, Randy uh, is supporting it very much on his side as well. So, uh, you know, we'll probably end up spending a few extra dollars in that area. So hopefully we will have that um, if we're able to kind of keep some of the expense money um, from going out the door in the last, uh, you know, month here. And uh, other than that, then obviously we'll always look at our, our normal priorities within the district, whether it's, uh, you know, classroom IT related or books or anything of that nature, classroom, you know, uh, desks and stuff like that. We have a normal series of things that we have to look at each year to just make sure we maintain and stay forward. So, you know, at this point, um, again, not, not anything major change from last month and uh, the changes we expect going forward will be all in the expense lines. If we're fortunate enough. Do you need a motion to accept that? Yes. yes Make a motion to accept the FY14 budget summary as presented by Mr. Yuko. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Five. <coughs> Bill, I uh, haven't driven out back uh, in the last several oh, weeks. Wait till you but do. But I, I, I bumped into Coach Sullivan today, and uh, he was thrilled. Uh, he said, you know, he went back there, walked around. He said, you can start to really envision it. You, it's uh, worth, it's worth. I was there a few weeks ago, but it sounds like I need to get back there again. Oh, yeah, all of it. If we haven't driven around recently, everybody should. Yeah, and the grass is now actually starting to come through. I so know. you're starting it, to see the real outlines of the, mm. of the fields, obviously. Um, you know, as I said, I mean, there were, the original plan called for a lot of things. I think uh, Jim Develis did a phenomenal job with the design, and we all owe him uh, a thank you for the effort he put in on that. Um, but then there was a lot of people that stepped forward too. I mean, uh, Cablevision came forward with some of their needs uh, that had really not been kind of considered. And, uh, you know, again, I took a little uh, leverage on trying to get some of those things done. Um, again, trying to protect what we're going to have as an investment out there in the long run. Um, even the, uh, the, the supply or the um, general contractor we were using, we were supposed to have just a basic shed out there. Uh, they poured a, a concrete pad that uh, I think you could build a school on top of um, <laughs> to put that out there. So we have our own power systems out there right now that are built into that shed because it's so it's so well built. And uh, mm -hmm. obviously we have our own well system, uh, so we Can won't be using credit? town water to water the, the fields. Um, you know, Is we that brought, what we're drawing from now or not yet? Yes, we are drawing. Yeah. We'll be drawing well, as soon as they started up this week. We'll be drawing from that. The because um, water is going to be important now. Isn't yes, it's going to be extremely important <laughs> if we're going to grow some grass. shortly. Um, the cable vision setup we did was we actually <laughs> made it so that their um, their cabling can go right to each of the true. backstops. Um, from that uh, shed so they don't have to drive vehicles down there or anything and it will be all protected they'll be able to actually have some gear in the shed itself um, so again I think we've done a great job they obviously uh, that uh, the memorial flagpole that was on the original baseball field uh, which is after mr. guy um, it was kind of in his memory uh, has been uh, retained and we actually have the base already back in um, so they're gonna the work original on base the original base so they'll be working on that uh, putting that up as part of the um, opening ceremonies next spring when when everything is done but uh, and they were actually uh, the entire baseball community was out there uh, last night with us um, looking to kind of where the flagpole is kind of make that a uh, little bit more uh, of an activity area where they'll have it seating and, and maybe some more community stuff there it's, it's the dead center so you can look at either either venue that's going on um, and even the little practice field that we built that we thought would be a nice place for the uh, you know freshman football or soccer or stuff like that turned out to be bigger in the end it was about 30 feet longer than we had expected to be so it's a much larger field uh, so that will work out well so you know again I think it's I think overall it, it came to what that design you saw was uh, which I, I think a lot of people were surprised that we actually did uh, get it to the level we said we would um, mm -hmm. but I, I do again credit Jim for a lot of effort that he put into it and uh, a lot of other people did a lot of fundraising as well so you have to drive our shared community vision for a full campus yes. here that back area is mm -hmm. certainly putting us on a way it's terrific and maybe sometime next year we can talk about how we're gonna finish phase two or two slash three or two three four of the turf field sounds like a good topic mm -hmm. there's been a lot of I mean there has been a lot of I, I think what we uh, you know both Deb and I talked about originally when and Amy when we were putting in the the uh, turf field obviously we only had limited funds so uh, you guys took it as far as you possibly could but yeah. the other side of it is letting the, the <coughs> all of these sports activities play on that turf field for a year um, I think will generate a lot more support for the, for the next phases because I think they now see what they could use it for not just what we can use it for um, you know, you go out there on a weekend and it's six o'clock in the morning till six o'clock at night and it's mm -hmm. nonstop. So, uh, and that's obviously not our school, uh, you know, activities, that's the town activities moving forward. So 
you know, again, I think that's, uh, you know, I've been approached by a number of people looking for the lighting side and looking for different things. And I keep encouraging them that this is something, but, you know, it's not something we can afford to, to go on to right now ourselves. So, right. And I also the new project with the birdhouses, bathhouses, and the yes. bushes are going to be very exciting. Yeah, very yes, in fact, yeah. our um, our very own, we'll still claim him. I know he goes to sell the Declan He should be along shortly because he needs a signature from me. And I'm making my don my first donation tonight. So I put it all your tables and people at home go so, on foxboroughbirdhouses.org and um, support this wonderful student and his project. So I think exciting. Declan's also going to have a booth on uh, Founders Day yes. if if they don't have time to go right. on the computer and go to his website. But he'll be at Founders Day. He was at Touch a Truck last weekend, mm -hmm. promoting his project. So I know he's working very hard to get it off the ground and moving forward. He is. So I'm buying a birdhouse and a blueberry bush. Mm. Oh, well, the birds have to eat. <laughs> exactly my point. <laughs> we shall provide. Moving right along. Um, other matters? Other matters? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to, speaking of sports, um, the girls softball team won yesterday, which puts them in the state tournament. Congratulations, oh, girls softball. Excellent. That was a great win. And um, a Hearn career day this morning. Thank you to Mr. Gardner for arranging that. And I know Sartina there, and your wife is helping out. Um, it Just a great group of people, a great variety of things for kids to see and to learn about for careers. I think that's a wonderful tradition for middle school kids to start thinking about that. And I, th I thought it was a great morning. So thank you to you for continuing to You're spearhead welcome. that, because I know it is not easy. And to all the parents who participated. Mm. That is not an easy feat to pull off. Well, it was nice of them. You know, they make the they make the day. You know, people like Tina and Amy participating, you participating, uh, and That's all the parents great. who were there. And kids uh, were great. Um, I'm not sure if any of you had seen this, but uh, over this past weekend, um, Suffolk University awarded a yes. posthumous honorary Doctor of Humane Letters degree to Sam Burns for his significant contribution to science through his willingness to shed light on progeria while inspiring people to live life to the fullest. So his legacy lives on, and, and I know we're not even finished yet. And on and on. So I wanted people that's to know great. that. And then in the info, oh, no, uh, no, that's no, just no, a no, private no, invitation oh, oh, okay. because that's a, that's a private showing before it is public. Okay. Um, the students will see it, but um, it, it, it will be shown, but that's sort of not yet. people want to see it a little bit ahead. Okay. So that's, a, that's its debut with a small group. Um, I put in your information packet an, a, a chart mm -hmm. from the May 4th Boston Sunday Globe. There was an extensive article about advanced placement courses at high schools across the South Shore. And I was most pleased, I tried to sum up, like how would I, how would I really sum this up? So how I would sum it up, it's, it, it was a, a chart that showed the participation and performance of local public school districts on AP exams administered in the spring of 2013, because that's the most recent year by which they compiled it. And they listed 45 school districts on the South Shore. And Foxborough, 86.7% of our students who take AP exams scored three to five, which gives you credit in college. So it's a scale of one to five. If you were in a three, four, or five, it will count towards college credit. 86.7% of our students' AP exams met that criteria. Of the 45 districts, we exceeded the scores of 39 out of the 45 districts. Only five districts exceeded our performance. And you can see those, are, those districts are Braintree, Cohasset, Hingham, Sharon, Westwood. We exceeded the other 39 in our, uh, the percentage of students who scored three above. So. I was very pleased to see that. I think it certainly complements the work of all of our high school staff, our expansion of AP courses, but mostly the preparation that our staff gives students mm -hmm. to be able to do well on those AP exams. I thought that was a, 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 mm -hmm. just a wonderful data bite. Bulletin board material. For you. And I bring in copies to our next strategic planning meeting because oh, we'll be excellent. stuck to tackling the goals or at least add this to our situation mm -hmm. assessment that we have. That's very that's impressive. The 28th, right? Our next meeting is yeah, a week from tonight. A week yes. from tonight. Okay. Can we put so. this on the next district report card? Yeah, that's what I was <laughs> yes. thinking. But, uh, but also, these are not, these are uh, some of these communities 
spend more per pupil basis. I believe too. all of them. Oh, sure. All of them do. Um, I mean, which I think is another compliment. Yeah, sure. And so it's like we say, good value for the dollar. You're, you're, we're right at the state right. average for per, pu per pupil spending, and we're getting some outstanding These results in some of the data points that, you know, actually matter to parents and count for students. So. Right. I mean, the, we weren't comparing just to in-kind communities, which I think Correct. is a <clears throat> yes. Well, that's it. Great. Thank you. Anybody else? Debbie? Uh, I have received a note from Town Hall and the Selectmen that my term has expired as being on the Recreation Committee, so <laughs> we need to somehow address this uh, before somebody else is sworn in. So this is her this role as a school committee liaison to the Recreation Committee. And a you, very you, I mean, you slot. like, like you, you know, when you're reelected to the school committee, so you or the policy you need a subcommittee or the to appoint Bevy to the recreation way, department as a liaison. Assuming so Bevy would continue in that capacity. <laughs> would you? Well, we can kind of do it as a consensus too. I think. I don't know. It? We've got a motion and a second on the oh, table. Oh, right. <laughs> on the floor. Well, it's in a motion to reappoint. You okay to doing it? Okay. All in favor? Okay. Consensus. Okay. Awesome. And then I just between now and our next meeting, very several things are going to be very exciting, like class night. And I all when I think of class night, I think of all, you know, the all night party. And that always reminds me of Lord Byron's quote, you know, "Oh glorious night, thou art not made for slumber." <laughs> <laughs> but you know what would be helpful? I'm glad you said that. I believe I have a letter from Diana Mice Pathlo with the activities that are happening as a result of senior, which is actually the first year we got. It. I'm, I'll forward that to you. That might I found be it nice, helpful. Yeah, really yeah, helped me fill up my time. I think I'll that, tell you that much. I, as informational, right. I, uh, and I would just like to um, thank the entire faculty and support staff throughout the entire system who have all contributed to the success of our seniors, and I would like to wish each senior graduate um, wonderful success in whatever their after their post high school plans are Wonderful. very nice anybody else Steve uh, the shortest titled event in town this week was the eighth grade orchestra band chorus and jazz and junior jazz band concert held at the Ahern um, not only that but it was, uh, I thought, fantastic if anybody, uh, for those of us who saw it. And um, I'm just going to do a shout out because I, I think the junior jazz band uh, jumping at the woodside by Count Basie just smoked the room. And it was <laughs> what was it by Count Basie? Jumping at the woodside. I can hum a few bars if you'd like. <laughs> anyway, it was fantastic. And uh, kudos to every human being associated with it. I was I was there as well. It was a fantastic night, and I, I think um, the Junior Jazz Band won an award at a music festival in Stoughton mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago, and um, their drummer Corey Hall won the most valuable player in their division, which is pretty impressive himself. Very impressive. Yeah, and to, might I guess, be a Nick Adir, I guess uh, they'll be a successor. Yeah, I guess there's a <laughs> successor to. Uh, well, the we current drummer we, that's yeah, graduating. We, we well, need a good you know, I, Big shoes to fill, Katie, but Corey can do it, so. <laughs> I had a family friend sitting next to me, and, and he leaned over and he said, these kids are seventh and eighth graders, mm. and he's a music nut. And th they were just terrific. I know people can't From believe From the it. beginning of the program to the end, but it was just, it was great. And, and tomorrow it, night is, chamber, I think, the last, one of the last concerts of the whole year. Mm -hmm. It's going to be chamber uh, Thursday night at 7. Chamber. Tomorrow music. is Thursday. Okay, I'm, seeing, <laughs> okay. I'm just all mixed up. By me. Well, having our our meetings on I'm Wednesdays make it makes it very short. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're lucky we're all here. That's all I have. Mr. Maybe Chair. we should do all that right. more often, just if we yep. are getting in the doldrums. Any other other matters? All right, then just to reiterate what uh, Katie spoke about at the beginning of the night, uh, we are going to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing contact, uh, contract negotiations with non-union personnel, specifically the superintendent's contract, 
and we do plan to return to open session and we estimate that'll be probably 10 to 15 minutes from now I would guess do I have a uh, motion to go into executive session I'll make that motion a second okay roll call aye aye chair says aye aye thank you and we'll be back shortly so I don't know if we formally need a motion to reopen I, why don't I yeah, why don't I, I suggest I one a, yes I'm I, motion, I'd like to reopen the school committee thank meeting you. second Thank you. All those in favor? Okay. Um, so I'll start uh, this last part of our uh, open meeting. Um, as the public knows, we just had a final brief uh, executive session at which uh, the committee reviewed uh, the contract that we are prepared to uh, offer to the superintendent. Uh, the public knows from all of our comments, <coughs> but certainly uh, from our, our public uh, performance review that we are very pleased with the job that Mrs. Spinelli is doing. And we are pleased to announce that we would like to offer her a new three-year contract uh, commencing July 1st, 2014 and ending June 30th, 2017. And uh, also that the contract will um, pay Superintendent Spinelli an annual salary of $175,000 for this coming school year. And uh, we are very pleased to, uh, to offer this. I want to thank um, Katie for her work, working with Debbie on this, and also uh, Tina, who went through and did an extensive review of the language, updated the um, evaluator uh, language yes. as an example. Very much and, appreciated. Um, we uh, also, it took the committee a little bit of time to get through the contract this year, and we want to apologize to Mrs. Spinelli. It kept her on hold a little bit, um, but we are delighted with this. And of course, we're going to take a vote to make sure that I'm not saying anything the committee isn't uh, in favor uh, with, but uh, Debbie, we're delighted uh, to do this. So um, so I'll accept the motion, or are we can have further discussion first, whatever the committee would like. I'll make a motion. I'll second the motion to accept the contract superintendent's contract as for the dates you just okay motion on. by Katie seconded by Tina does the committee have any discussion they want to offer before or after a vote a vote of confidence that I'll third the motion <laughs> 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 any other discussion <laughs> all those in favor Five zero. do we need That's to do a roll or not many many thank so. yous it, it's um, I really want to thank Tina for the time we spent because her lawyer's eye on the contract was really helpful. I want to thank Katie for getting this process started. And most of all, it, it, I just want to say, it's, these past three years have really flown by. Mm -hmm. And it's been an honor to serve my community, our community. And I really look forward to uh, working with our, all of our great team over the next three years. So I'm really excited about it. I, I appreciate the vote of support, and uh, I appreciate your confidence in me. And I will continue to work hard for all of the kids here in Foxborough. Thank you very much. We know you will. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? I motion that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <coughs> thank you, Mike. <coughs>